Hello, 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 hello. How do you all do? I'm feeling very pink today. How can you, is this, we'll do the first, first and foremost thing so I don't start talking loads. Can you all hear me? Sound coming through loud and clear? Yeah? Or sound all lovely? Fantastic, fantastic. Right, I wanted to start, I didn't really have a plan of what I was going to, how I was going to start it, but I saw a lot, I saw a few comments from people, uh, because of the nature of the song yesterday, I saw a few comments from people being like, oh, I can't wait for today's stream, but I'm dreading it because I don't want to cry again, you know, I don't want to open, so I thought, I thought, like, we should focus, put it, we frame it all into a different, a different light almost, I don't want this to be a super heavy stream where everyone comes around feeling, leaves it feeling heavier, feelings like open, certain doors been opened that make it more difficult, um, because ultimately, I think talking about these things and even having gone through some of these things and experiencing and losing close people to me, um, I think really what I want to center this around is all the reasons that make this very short window of us having a human being experience where no one really has figured out why we are having a human be being experience, why we've been, why we are the ones, that, 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 I, I think it's... That there's so many theories, possibilities, options that mean we're in this little window as people. Um, and just kind of talking about ways where even when it feels like the odds are stacked against us, even when we feel like our demons are at, uh, the most loud, that we can make that a, um, I think, enjoyable, maybe it's not the right word, but make it a good enough experience for us to want to see it through to the end. Because I think that's, why is that important? I don't know because you know I've I've wrestled up and down with nihilism of is 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 that important? Does it even matter? Um, but then there's something deep down, call it a survival instinct or whatever, which which makes it not such an easy or viable option. And and I think that there is a lot of richness to be found by simply participating in this human experience that we're having and seeing it through, even when it's really fucking difficult. So that's kind of why I wanna I wanna I want people to leave this stream feeling better feeling more uplifted, feeling happier, even though that we'll probably touch on some more difficult topics because uh, of the nature of the song yesterday. Anyway, I'd like to see how, how are you guys all doing? That's what I want to know. How are, you, how are you guys all doing? You all good? And also, also as well, I, I've had a lot of people saying this to me as well, that they're worried about me. Um, even even my friend before he left today because he I had my friend visiting over. He's like, I just want to check in with you and make sure that you would never consider something like that. And um, I genuinely feel now, after having hitting really low points, and th and this is what I want to kind of impart upon anybody who might have been in the position that I was about five or six years ago. I genuinely know now that I can deal with it when it comes, even if my health falls apart again. I know that I'm just going to see it through. I don't know why I know that, but I just know that I will. And I think it's because I've learnt that even in a seemingly impossible situation to climb out of, I was able to climb out of it. And and those that's, that looks different for everybody. And climbing out of it may not even necessarily mean escaping the thing that's plaguing you. It's more just about living with this thing that's plaguing you. That's what it was for me. And getting to a place where I'm like, I'm okay. I'm okay. Like, yeah, I've got this fucking shit or immune condition. My body hurts a lot of the time. My brain feels fuzzy a lot of the time. But I enjoy this experience of being alive now. And um, I'm not trying to say this to be like... Because obviously I'm in a position, and I realise why it may seem hypocritical. I'm in a position where I've managed to really do well with music. And I don't want people to be like, oh, but... Climbing out means having to be successful. No, that's that's all bullshit, and that's just noise. Like, 
the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing is because that was my passion. And it, uh, this looks different for everybody, but climbing out could simply just mean being okay in the body that you are, being okay. Because that was enough for me. Everything now is just a bonus, really. But I just, yeah, I want to make sure that you're all okay because I realized that by putting out that song yesterday, I saw a lot of doors were being opened and I saw it touched people in some ways that maybe unrooted things that were quite uncomfortable to face. And I felt, I feel almost a responsibility to make sure that you're all okay. Um, and I want to let you all know that I'm okay. And, and I wouldn't consider doing something like that now. So I'm hoping that you're all okay. And if, if I could impart anything on this upon you is that even in impossible situations, there are ways to reframe things that make this tolerable. Um, and make this experience enjoyable even, fulfilling, beautiful, incredible, where for some reason I can see, I can touch, I can feel, um, and I'm, I'm alive, and that's pretty mental. Um, yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> I don't want to get too heavy. I'll, I'll, I'm going to listen to the song with you guys because that's what I normally do. I normally play it. I also want to let you guys know that there's a live song coming out um, there's a live version of this song that's totally different uh, to, the, to the version that you heard. Um, I've written two new verses for it, so that'll be coming out in a few weeks, so stay tuned for that. I'm really happy with that. It's one of my favorite live version takes on a song that I've done. So, um, yeah, that was cool. We did this the other day when Sam was around here. But anyway, let's get to it. Let's watch it together, and then we'll chat, and then I'll read some of these, uh, these questions and stuff that are coming in. But let's just, let's just get to it. Here we go. And um, if you're hearing for the, this for the first time and you're watching, enjoy. Right, here we go. Also, I wanted to talk about this very, very quickly. This is, in my opinion, fucking stupid. This, this, this. Yeah. I kind of get it. It's like a trigger warning, right? But it limits the audience. You know what I find crazy, yeah? This won't happen if you talk about murder this won't happen if you talk about mass murder. This won't happen if you talk about like something violent. Uh, you won't get this following content may contain, unless obviously you're encouraging it. But like, I could sing a song about going into a supermarket and shooting every person in that supermarket. I wouldn't get the trigger warning. This is a song about. Um, this is a song about coming to terms with something, someone very close to me. It's about honouring someone very close to me. Um, and and the song isn't encouraging it in any way it's 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 actually trying to find the opposite trying to find some sort of resolution trying to find some sort of peace anyway that's just a little rant i thought this was silly uh what do you guys think about it i don't know i, I think it's, it's censorship it's a strange one i understand sometimes if censorship is involved right and i do i do know that it's, it's good to put like a little bit of a warning on things like a trigger warning or something but um i don't know i feel like it's a little bit skewed the morality of the trigger warning world because if certain things don't It is a tricky one. It is a tricky one. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly fully where I stand on the fence about this, but it was, it, this is kind of limiting the reach that it's going to get. I do like this that they put this uh, number down here. They put this. Um, uh, hang on. Are we seeing this on the screen? Yeah. This. They. They put like a support number here. I think that's pretty cool. I know. It's a topic I want to think about a little bit more before I f formalize an opinion on it. Anyway, let's watch the video. Let's go. I wish to proceed <laughs> to watch my own video. Thanks. Oh, Sorry. oh fuck my eyeballs. Oh, fuck. Ah, yes. On the other side Suicide, suicide, suicide Oh, why, oh, why, oh, why Treading on the tracks in the night time It never really felt like the right time Suicide, suicide, suicide I'm so fucking lonely beneath this Narcissistic, can't keep a secret Miscount sheep, but can't sleep Also, I just want to big up Lewis for doing this video Um, Incredible job Like, absolutely, he smashed it out of the park like I yeah that's it basically he's he's done such a good job um 
what do you guys what do you guys think of the video like i'm just gonna read some comments quickly yeah in it in it what i love is that you can pause frame by frame like i'm gonna check i'm gonna show you guys this and it's like what i love is like the change in like here we go when you get this the first it's like it'll turn into a cyborg into a frankenstein frame by frame so fucking cool man i love i love this style it almost feels like a sort of trippy dream I think it's very, very cool. Anyway, let's carry on. Narcissistic, can't keep a secret. Miscount sheep, but can't sleep a misfit. Some say trouble, but some say sadistic. Bruises my brother, one time or the other. My skin felt counterfeit. Silicone rubber, bruises my sister. Skin pop the blister. Dig deep, resist the feeling when it hits you. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I. Falling through the cracks of the night sky. A light goes out on the other side. Suicide, suicide, suicide. I love that shot as well there, the uh, the skulls morphing into, it's it's a beautiful moment that one actually, it's like the skulls moving into, um, uh, the fist is generally a sound of standing up against something, you know, you've got the raised fist in the air, uh, I, I see that against, you know, standing up against these forces that want to persuade you uh, to do something that you can't come back from, I really like that, that's one of my favourite tracks. Suicide, suicide, suicide. Treading on the tracks in the night time It never really felt like the right time Suicide, suicide, suicide Sick boy, sick boy, bitten by a tech boy Love that too And this as well, you see them going to the... I'm so fucking washed up and seasick Masochistic kid with a split lip Six feet deep, I can't eat, I'm nervous Won't stay Just like, when your eyes watch it, there's so much you can find, bro Like, even watching the walls Split lip, six feet deep, I can't eat, I'm Like, turning into either cities or like a cyber board Like a, a, a mother board, a circuit board it just, yeah, it just changes. Nervous, won't stay down cause my body purges. Useless my mother, can't keep in my supper. Skin so pale cause my cheeks leak colour. Truth is my father, you choose your karma, draw for the sword. You see that as well? There was like a, a there's things that I oh, don't even know. There was like a little person. You see that? Father, you choose your There, hang on, here, right here. Father, you choose your Oh man, I love this shit. Karma, yeah, this draw for the sword, then drive through the armor. The car as well, keep your eyes on the car. Suicide. So this last this last section was the section that I wrote. So that song, I finished that song last year. And I had that was gonna be the song. It was gonna stop it. So I had this song done. And um I was almost like dreading the release this week. I was like, this is a few weeks ago, I was like so short and it just kind of feels a bit like incomplete for me i don't know what it was but i was like you know I've got, i'm putting this song out because it's a bit of a change from the hip-hop stuff and i think that's a good thing but that was a part of me that's like i don't know it feels it feels incomplete and it feels i don't know so i i um i sat down it was it was funnily enough like I, so i had this i had the, that interview with Knox and, and we were chatting and i was talking about joe in it it came up he, he came up and i was like um and I was like, yeah, no, I haven't actually written about him since Freckled Angels. I don't know why. I remember being like, yeah, I'm not actually sure why, but it just hasn't been something that I've felt compelled to write about for a while. I mean, it happened a long time ago, and I came to peace with it. And um, I don't know, I don't know what it was. I, f I think that that almost like planted a seed. I was I was sat sat by my piano, and I was like, you know what? If I'm dreading this release, and it feels incomplete, then just do something about it. Don't just release it and dread it. Do something about it so you feel proud of it. So I sat down at the piano. And I had this like I had that do 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 this little, little simple piano melody, and then that line came to my head. Um, it's hard to take off from the ground when your wings are cut, your stomach burns when you're drinking from an empty cup, and then it kind of just fell out. And even then, it wasn't intended to be about Joe, and it just kind of went that way. And it's almost like it needed to be said. And then the words just were there. It was like I was just plucking the words out, and um, 
I, I usually I'll learn the song and then I'll record the vocals. This time I was writing. I wrote like two lines. I'd get in the vocal booth and I'd record those two lines or two lines, get in the vocal booth and record it. I wouldn't have the song whole song written. I'd just be recording it piece by piece. And that's why I genuinely was crying because I was like, I, I wrote a, written a line and it, I connected to it so much that I started, I started crying. And then I was like, I'm not going to wait until I stop crying. And I got in the, vo in the vocal booth and I recorded it while I was still crying. And that's how the song kind of came together piece by piece. Um, and by the end, it was it was really it was about an hour or two's process. I had that whole last section recorded, and um, it just made the song. It changed the whole start of the song because the whole start of the song is about me, and it almost gives justification for the start of the song in a weird way. It like makes it come full circle. I don't think the the end should exist without the start, and I don't think the start should exist without the end. It kind of all, yeah, it gives a it gives an explanation for. I don't know. That's the way I see it anyway. I, I, I don't know. What, 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 what do you, did you guys like? We get, it'd be interesting to feel what you think. It's a bit more Kendrick does this sort of stuff a lot. He'll just like straight up halfway through a tune, he just beat switch up. I fucking love that shit. This is a little bit more like emotional than a, than just like a straight beat switch up, but I quite like, I like that switch. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's watch the end of it together and we'll talk about it. Uh. It's hard to take off from the ground when your wings are cut Your stomach burns when you're drinking from an empty cup You know the entire ocean came from my tear ducts I see the world through Fibonacci sequences and double dutch I guess there's some that's born lucky, there's some that's not I tried to cut away my bitterness, hatchet job I locked my youth inside a trunk, inside a pickup truck Then dumped the whole thing over that same bridge the night you jumped I think about that sometimes, vividly What it felt like to look down and see tranquility One sudden movement in a world of possibility Only one movement to expose our fragility I fucking miss you, and I miss myself I miss thinking we were indestructible as well I miss chilling by the pier cave and kicking back with Callum Hugo Say you're Justin Stevie and the fucking lads I miss missing that, I numb myself to close the gap I never even call them up, the distance is my plaster cast The truth is that the day you jumped, my childhood jumped too But I still can't find that angle, all I find is missing you, man I miss you with all my rhymes I picture running five minutes quicker I'm right on time I picture pulling you back over the edge And then we're crying And holding you my brother And telling you this fine Not the way that it works Cause I was late like a jerk There's not a day where I could find a way To break from the hurt Your body missing So we never got to wave to the hearse I hope you're listening I love you man I miss you absurd Fuck Yes, right Alan, let me get on to full screen. Yeah, it's 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 always hard to speak <laughs> after like, it's gonna put in a big part of myself and how I felt about these things. The funny thing is, this is it's such a long time ago now that I actually did a lot of coming to peace with everything. And um, it's, it's a strange one, it's a strange one these, these times when you, if everyone's ever lost anyone, if, if someone's lost someone recently, this was my experience with it. It's like the intervals in between where you feel stuff about it get longer as time goes on. It's just the nature of life. But um, when it hits you, it hits you just as hard as it did, even 10 years on. It's not like it's not like the pain gets less. It's more just like the intervals between the times you think about it get longer, which allows you to be a more productive human being. Um, yeah. And that, that was definitely my experience. My, my other experience was after after that happened, I lost more people in my life. And it never really felt the same as it did the first time. It never, it almost changed my relationship with what it meant to be alive, what it meant to be dead. Um, it, it, unusually, uh, it's not that I became like, because for a while I was worried that I was like numb and apathetic because that's what it felt like for a while. It felt like, oh, okay, someone's died again. And I just felt apathetic. I felt, I thought that I felt apathetic, but I don't think that's what it was. I think it was actually more just an acceptance. I don't think it was apathy. I, I think it was an acceptance that that's just what happens. <laughs> like we are, we're, um, we're not infinite. We're finite. We, we're here for a certain amount of time. And, and it wasn't, 
this devastating blow of like because I think the, I think one of the devastating things was like I felt before that is like I said in the song I felt indestructible and you hear about people dying in the news but it never really pierces your your veil of existence at all so you're just like oh yeah like death happens but you're not really like oh yeah death happens until it happens to someone you see all the time and then all of a sudden they're not there and you're like fuck like yeah it's 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 a weird it's a weird thing but i remember uh I, I lost another friend like six months later not to suicide to um a cliff jumping accident he went swimming uh, again another guy that i grew up with lovely lovely guy called callum and um he was actually there with me and joe's funeral funnily enough and we were getting drunk together <laughs> uh when joe's funeral was there and he's a wicked guy and he and he died like not not about three months after that in this in this accident and um it was just so weird. I remember feeling guilty and I was like, I remember feeling guilty that I d wasn't hurting as much, even though I should be. And I was like, why the fuck am I not in bits? And, and then it, and then I lost another person about a year later to suicide. And um, it's just like, yeah, I, I, don't, I can't, I don't think it was apathy because at the time I felt guilty because I thought I was numb. But I think it was just an acceptance and a peace with those things because I'd spent had so many tears for Joe, and even now I still do. I don't. I don't know what it was. It was almost like a a switch in my brain. Sorry, I was saying that this could be uplifting, and I've gotten kind of heavy with it. Uh, so I hope you allow me. But um, but I honestly, 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 think my gut feeling is that this is all worthwhile, and it's worth sticking out the ride. It's worth the experience. I know a lot of you shared stories with me about people that you've lost in the comment section. Um. Uh, over at Discord, I know there were a lot of people. You know, it, it unnerved, it unearthed a lot of feelings that maybe people haven't looked at in a while. And that's why I feel like it's just good to create a space, right? Right now, create a space amongst yourselves in the Discord and YouTube where you can just reach out to each other and talk to each other. Because I think one of the big things is the isolation within this, and it's been amazing how many people can relate. And um, I think it's just on all of us, really. Um, to, to, to support each other through this, to talk to each other, to to lift each other up. Because I think we have created a really fucking positive space, man. And and I think we've created a really uh, accepting space and, and a space where it's all right to, um, to just be exactly whatever the fuck you are. And that could be anything. It could be vulnerable. It could be stoic. It could be... Uh, uh, you can be whatever the fuck you want, basically, and and and, and life can seem really, really heavy because we're trying to figure it all out. And there could have been lots of circumstances that could be lost. There could be addiction. There could be illness that really try and weigh us down. It's not easy being a human sometimes, but um, I think in between those those patches, there are really, there are moments of beauty. It might even be sad beauty. It might not be that we don't feel happy, but I think there are moments that make it worthwhile, or we can have impacts in, in areas that we didn't think we could. I think that we're incredible creatures. I really do. Um, even though sometimes my songs may come across quite pessimistic and bleak and dark, I think that we're... There's something quite special about being a human. And I think that we should try and figure out as best as possible and try and figure out how best to coexist as, as those things. Anyway, um, sorry, I'm going on a bit. But um, I'd love to hear some questions, guys. If you want to shoot some questions over, I'm well happy to talk about anything, um, answer anything, honestly. Am I religious? Uh, I'm. I'm not. I wouldn't say religious is the right word. I, th I think that I'm. Um, uh, and um, I would say that I'm agnostic, but agnostically leaning more towards spirituality. If that makes sense, like I believe that there could be, or there couldn't be, or there could be something totally uh, above our comprehension. We could be in some fucking computer coded system. <laughs> we could, or there could be a god, or um uh yeah uh, and and i'm open to that being anything i'm o i'm open to the idea of 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 buddha of jesus of allah of god of um of ganesha <laughs> of hanuman you know like i'm open to all of these things of ra of odin venus soul hades you know what i mean like i i love the stories and the mythology and 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 why the fuck not like we our comprehension and understanding is still a drop in the ocean it, we're, we're still in our infancy of science we're still in the infancy of understanding why things work and to be an atheist is is also making a firm decision that i know i believe what is there 
I, I, and but the same thing that's why i have a trouble um aligning myself with religion because that's also me saying i know for sure this is the right answer i think my where i stand on is i don't know anything <laughs> I, I i i couldn't comprehend anything um that big so i'm just wait i'm doing the best that i can morally that aligns with my morals and my moral compass and i'm trying to do the most good i can morally and hoping that that's enough you know rather than making a decision on what i think is the superior uh school of thought on spirituality i'm just doing my best basically that's where i stand on it any plans on touring um europe um yeah of course when i when i've gone through at the moment i'm not making any solid plans right because i'm still in treatment for health i don't know how long this is going to go on for hopefully not like for years <laughs> i doubt it but um yeah i hopefully by the end of the year i'll be ready to start thinking about those plans and as soon as i do obviously i'll share that with you guys yeah was the walking footage in calgary yeah it was um that was yeah we filmed some cool shit in calgary Anyone who wants to be an extra, you're welcome to be an extra. Yeah, of course, you can be an extra in the video. Sorry if I'm missing some of these questions, by the way. I'm just trying, I'm, I'm answering the ones that I see. I'm trying to do that, but my eyes are like fucking blurring the fuck out. Ah, come on, catch it. Is there like a slow mode? Can I like enable slow mode? Mode. How do you guys know how to en enable slow mode? I don't know how the fuck to do that, guys. Slow mode. Uh, pause chat. Ooh. Is that like. <laughs> I can't even read people telling me how to do it because it's moving too fast. Fuck it. Next time I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to have slow mode on so I can actually fucking enable that shit. Type forward slash slow mode. All right. Boom. Let's get this popping. Hang on. I need to do, I need to just do this Twitch thing. Because for some reason, it doesn't let me do it from Streamlabs. I'm just going to pop this on and then we're going to. I'm just going to pop this on and then we're going to. I'm just going to pop this on and then we're going to. Oh, it's not fucking working. I'm just going to pop this on. Oh, shut. Oh, it's not fucking working. Wait, we're in a loop there. Hang on. Slow mode. Slow. There we go. I think it's on. Bro, it's still fucking racing through. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sakes, man. Is there like a slow, slow? A double slow? <laughs> this is a fucking shambles, mate. Um, sl I'm just going to like copy and paste something and paste it. Do I get some hype? Fuck, man. I can't. <laughs> ah! Will the big push? Okay, I caught one. Will the big push make a comeback? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I've answered this in a few streams before. It's, it's kind of up to everybody, really. I'm well up for it, basically. Uh, if the boys are up for it, it it's, it's about being in the same place at the same time. Um, yeah, I love, I, love, I love those boys. And I love gigging. I love busking, so I'm up for it, if they're up for it. Cats or dogs? I'm a dog guy, I'm going to be honest. I feel like I am a dog. Like, uh, you know, like, cats are... Cats are more badass than dogs, I think, because cats are just like, I'll do what I want when I want. If I want to cuddle you, you fucking cuddle me, bitch. But I think I'm not... I think I'm a little bit stupid and just want cuddles all the time and just want... You know what I mean? I'm a dog. I'm a fucking dog. It is what it is. Uh, Noel or Liam? That's diff That's different. I mean, like, Noel's the obviously a fucking incredible songwriter, and Liam's obviously an incredible frontman. And that's why I think that they need each other to be what they are. You know what I mean? Like Oasis uh, is a lot better. I'm just gonna say it, it's a lot better than Liam on his own. It's a lot better than Noel on his own. That when they come together, they create something very unique. What's the deal with wearing Nike with Adidas pants? I'm I'm breaking down barriers, motherfucker. I'm I am uniting the world, one brand at a time, like the corporate whore I am. Yeah, I don't really care to be honest. I feel like if something looks nice, 
then I'll wear it, even if it is a social taboo. I don't really care. Um, shoe size. Uh, I Oh, I don't know why. I thought I'm 11. Sometimes I'm a 10 and a half. I'm 11 when it matters. Um, did I give input? Yeah, I gave input with a suicide video. Um, that I, I work with Lewis a lot. So Lewis did, um, he has done all my animated videos. Any animated video seen like Diazepam, um, all, all of the older ones like Heretic, that's Lewis. He's great. And I think he's just getting better. He also did my website. If anyone's checked out sickboy.co.uk, Lewis again, he's the boy. He's um he's very good. He's very talented, man. Are there any games I'm playing? Nah, man. I have, for so I've just been busy recently uh, with my health and then with sorting out these new videos. We filmed like five live sessions in the past few weeks, and um I've been busy, man. Uh, so I haven't really had time, unfortunately. To uh, I I I, I was playing Hogwarts. But I, I just, I'm way, I'm, my ADHD is also like popping at the moment. So like I try and sit down and after like 20 minutes, I'm just like, what's next? You know what I mean, I used to be able to be, I used, I used to be able to sit down and complete the fucking Final Fantasy games, which takes a lot of patience. And for some reason, the older I get, the less attention span I have. Unless it's for music, which seems to, seems to be all right. Um, here we go. What else we got? Give me the questions, baby. Favorite era? Ooh, probably my probably probably the nineties. You know when you're a kid, like the fond memories. Because I I could say earlier, but I never experienced it, so I don't know. Like I like I like a lot of things about the different areas. Like I love punk music. I love um, uh, old soul and blue stuff from the fifties. But um, but I wouldn't be able to say that they're my favorite because I didn't exist physically then. Um, here we go. Hmm. How many instruments can I play? Bass, guitar, drums, piano. Piano and bass and guitar are like my main three though. Everything else I'm just a dabbler in. I've dabbled in a bit of cello. I dabbled in a bit of um, kalimba. I think that's it. You know, like five or six. I, I, I played the trombone originally. That was my first instrument. But um, I gave up after Twinkle Twinkle Little Star because it didn't feel very cool. And then I got a guitar and I felt way cooler. Uh, I was I was slithering because I am part of the dark side. Um, how tall am I? Six foot one. Tall. I'm a short king. Favorite album record? That's too hard to answer, man. It changes all the time. Like I love, and it depend. It changes depending on my mood. There are some albums that I think undoubtedly like incredible and they've had a massive impact on me dre 2001 like i used that as a reference mix so many times um early albums are like loads of the red hot chili peppers early stuff like californication blood sugar sex magic by the way all of those albums um nirvana's first couple of albums rage against the machines first couple of albums they're just there's so, well, and there's so many that like i always come back to no matter how old or young i am those have been some consistent ones marshall mavis lp slim shady lp uh, Hives First album Fucking brilliant System of a Down Loads of System of a Down albums There's so many albums Yeah There's so many albums I just like Come back to When I, I love to go uh, Right now I'm back in my Like teenage years again In my new metal phase I'm like re-going through My new metal phase So I'm listening to a load of like Deftones System of a Down um, Placebo um, Loads of shit like that Basically I'm uh, For some reason it's, I found a love of it again So I go on the gym And I'm slapping on Slapping on a bit of soda yeah, Radiohead. I do like a bit of Radiohead. Do I know NF? I don't. I know. I, yeah, I know of NF. I don't know him personally. I think NF is sick, man. We in the last stream we went. We we played an NF song together. It was fun. Um, how are you? Okay, let's let's change the direction of this because in most of the streams we generically talk about music and what I like and what I don't like. It's all right, but it's, you know it is what it is. I think let's let's keep it on topic. How are you guys doing? And are any of you particularly? Um, after yesterday, are any of you particularly needing support? And if yes, um, how can we facilitate that? You know, how can we create a place of support for you? That's what I want to know. Let when we move away from the music questions for now, because I think it's a, a bigger topic. Yeah.
I'm okay, by the way. A lot of people are asking how I am. I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I want to know how you guys are doing. So we've, if you guys don't know, if you guys don't know, yeah, there's a Discord. A lot of people are saying in the chat, there's a Discord right now. And it's full of, I'm not even joking, it's full of incredible people. Like, um, I've spent a lot of time on there. Usually when you spend time in chat rooms and shit, um, I know it sometimes gets a little bit chaotic or there's trolls and stuff. I really haven't seen much of that, um, even without moderation. And um, I feel like it's just an amazing space for people to go and feel connected, for people to go and make friendships. I know that people a lot have made friendships over there. People have meeting up through there. People have had romance through there. Um, it's a beautiful thing. So I think we've. I'm really proud of this. We, like we've built a very cool community over there of amazing people. Um, so there's a link that every that comes up everywhere, every now and then. Um, and I'm sure that the chat will direct people to the, the, the Discord link. If you are fe someone right now that needs a community, that needs support, that doesn't want to feel alone, please go and join the Discord and you'll be surrounded with a lot of love and you'll be surrounded by a lot of people who are um, brilliant, in my opinion, amazing people. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that because that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted it to get a less about what the fuck is Ren doing and what the, what's the music that I'm making and I wanted it to be more about just the space where people can hang out. You know, like when I was a teenager, I used to come home and I used to, I'd just like sit on MSN Messenger for ages and you'd have like, you just chat with all your mates and like, you'd have these big chat rooms where you invite loads of people in or like, I, I used to play this thing called Habbo Hotel as well when I was like young, young. And that was the same sort of thing. It's like you can escape to these virtual spaces that feel very comforting where you feel like you can fill your time. Um, and no matter what age you are, by the way, if, if you're like young teen to old adult, uh, there's people from all ages just connecting, chatting, getting on with each other. So get yourself involved. Discord can be a little bit daunting when you first go on it because it looks a bit confusing. It almost looks quite open sourcey, but you get used to it after a while. It, when I first started setting my Discord, I was like, what the fuck? I still, I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest. But um, yeah, it, it's, it can seem daunting, but you get used to it very quickly. And, and it's, it's quite simple when you get used to it. So yeah, if you're feeling like that, please go over to the Discord. Yeah. Does AI scare me? Oh, this is a this is a topic, man. I feel like this is a topic for another a slightly different stream. But I'll, where my I'll tell you my surface level thoughts about it. I think that a, ultimately it's not AI that scares me; it's human beings because we are creating this tool. So it's how do we create this tool responsibly? I think AI does scare me and it also really really excites me because of where it could take the human race in terms of problem solving i think it's a very exciting prospect that we're now developing technology that's exponentially increasing to the point where it could help us with health space travel science uh automating jobs that don't have to be done by people like it's we're, we're stepping into a really exciting place the problem is that within a competitive market we have AI companies trying to beat each other to the finish line, which means that we may overlook some very important ethical and moral questions about how best to create this AI. So I think that really the question is, how do we collaborate and make sure that this is done in the safest way possible, in the most responsible way possible, that ensures it is the most beneficial tool possible? I feel the same way about social media. I feel the same way about things like Neuralink. I feel the same way about um, any technology that uh, integrates so heavily in our life. I think that we need to not make it about profit first. And a lot of these companies make profit and expansion and being the number one in the market. They put that above everything else. I think that's a very erroneous approach that humans take. I think that this needs to be approached in a way that is collaborative, uh, that a lot of thought has gone into the execution of it. Otherwise, it could be a scary thing. And a lot of media that at the moment is implying that it is a scary thing. And it is as far as human beings are idiots. So how much do we trust each other <laughs> is the big question for me. Um, and I'm not sure. But I think, I think it can be an amazing thing. It's a tool, basically. So we just really need to push the narrative that this needs to be done collaboratively, basically. <clears throat> Hang on, how is the ADHD with the fame? Well, I haven't really 
I'm in a bit of a bubble here in Calgary, so the only time I'm really exposed to the weird world of like your music becoming successful is when I turn the internet on. So I can choose, I can limit as much as I want to expose myself to. And um, I'm not really, I, I feel like I'm the sort of person that wouldn't deal well with like walking down the street and getting fucking paparazzi following or whatever. Like I'm hoping I never get to that point to be honest. But um, I, um, at the moment it's fine. Like I get recognized every now and then in Calgary, but it's not, it's not overwhelming. Um, it's just nice when it happens to be honest. Um, so it's okay. And when the, the internet stuff gets overwhelming, like these 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 fucking live chats never used to be this like question question question. It used to be a lot more manageable, but it's fine because I can limit it. I can choose when I want to step away and just be an anon- anonymous human being again and just be Ren, which is what I am. Um, so yeah, at the moment it's manageable, basically. superhero power i've thought about this a lot my my superhero power would be to control time but you don't age this is how this is the how i've in depth i thought about it you don't age when you freeze time because that would be that would suck say if you like froze time and then you just still got older because what i would do i would freeze time yeah and i'd spend ages either like practicing an instrument or getting a song down or getting a thing down or fucking reading or whatever or sleeping say i'm a bit tired i'm out at a rave I just pause it, I have a nap, and then I'm good to go again. Boom. I'm I'm up and I'm ready. But I also thought that the physics within the frozen time world would need to still apply. So you'd somehow still be able to have electricity, even though it would be physically impossible in the frozen time, because there would be no people to operate, you know, and things wouldn't be able to move. But gravity, air, and electricity and those things would still somehow in this frozen world be able to exist. I don't know how, but the, it's just magic and it? it's a superpower. We don't have to worry too much about the mechanics of it. That would happen. And then with controlling time, I could also go back in time and forward in time. That would be really fucking cool just to like check out what's going on. Fuck with some things in the past. Fuck with some people while I'm well, while they're frozen. Uh, use it for c- extremely perverted purposes. Like look at some boobs, definitely, um, in frozen time. Yeah. Yeah, I've thought about this a lot. (laughs) How... Oh, bloody hell, these questions are hard to write. I'd freeze time and look at this chat as well, man. (laughs) Oh, I can scroll up and it stops. Oh, okay, cool. Do I have any tips on coping with anxiety? Anxiety is a funny one for me because like my anxiety has always just been like general anxiety. So like whenever I get anxiety, there's no reason and it really pisses me off. Like I'll wake up and I'll be really fucking anxious all day. And and because of that, I can't be like, oh, this is the reason I'm anxious. So I can't solve it. And that's really fucking annoying. It's just like a sense of dread that's there. And it's, I still get it randomly now. It's not as much as I used to get it, but I still get it. When I, when I, I, I think that, my coping mechanisms are like okay today i'm anxious what can i do to like not put myself in situations where this makes my day really so like on those days i'm not going to go into a massive social situation or i'm just i'm just like i limit the things that i'm doing or like i'll I'll just chill out and watch some series on netflix or like you know what i mean i'll, I'll try and because I, I see it like the weather like it will come and then it will go eventually so that's yeah with mine it's not if, if there was a reason, I'd be able to fucking work it out, but it's randomly comes. I'll just be fucking anxious about something. And then when I am, it's like everything makes me anxious. I'm like going to the fucking supermarket. I'm like, oh shit, I've got to go and t- t- talk to the fucking checkout lady. I'm feeling mad anxious about that. And it's weird, man, because then like, other days I'll be super confident about it and I'll be talking to them and just like, we'll be having a laugh about something. And strange, it's just random. Right, hang on, I'm trying to catch some of the questions here. Am I watching any series at the moment? Uh um I'm watching like I'm watching actually I'm just like watching a lot of podcast things. I watched this one called The Basement Yard. I don't know if you guys know that one. It's just kinda of funny. And then I watched the Lex Lex Fridman one. Um on on YouTube a lot. I I don't know. I just really like it because I feel like I'm learning shit every time. I like them.
the last book I read was uh, uh, Bukowski. Um, I read Post Office and then I read another one of his with a long name. Oh, I've forgotten, forgotten what it was. Yeah, uh, Bukowski. It was good. Um, currently, I, I, I'm still, I'm slowly getting my way through um, Crime and Punishment, but it's it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot um, by Dostoevsky, uh, just because it's one of the one of the big boys. <clears throat> so, I'm, and I've been told it's incredible. So I'm I'm still quite early days in, in Crime and Punishment, but that's what I'm reading at the moment. Uh, Brighton, the rings are from Brighton. Uh, just the lanes in Brighton. They're like this little like handmade ring shop. Yeah, and they're spinny rings. Hours and hours and hours of fun. So much fun. I'm having fun right now. Are you guys having fun? Um, Rolling Stone. Oh yeah, the Rolling Stone interview. I, I had that last week. Went out this week. Um, it's cool. Rolling Stone, a pretty fucking iconic um, uh, news outlet. So yeah, that was cool. Um, anyway, what I, what I was saying earlier, let's get back to that. Discord, get yourselves over to Discord if you're needing help right now. Um, after this, just go make some friends. If you if you're needing a support network, or if you feel like you're in a social group that don't fully understand you, then there's a lot of people out there in the world, and uh, those are some great. That's a great place to start if you don't know where to start looking to meet some people. Um, they're a great bunch. No tattoos is because uh, of of my condition. I've got this this thing called mast cell activation disorder, where I'm allergic to like it's it's, it's a, a long standing thing as a result of my autoimmunity. I'm just like allergic to everything. So like having something permanently in my body is a risk that my body might reject it, and then I'll just have like an eternal allergic reaction. It's a shame because I fucking love tattoos, man. So I'm I'm actually in the process of like talking to a tattoo artist. Um, and trying to get some ingredients, getting that over to my doctor and being like, yo, is there a way that we can find some pigment that is like the most non-reactive? Because I would like some tattoos. I genuinely, I, I love hand tattoos. I want my hands. I want some tattoos on my hands. I think that would be cool as fuck, man. But I, um, yeah, I I can't. That's the only reason. Um, it's not because I am a good, good boy. My favorite Pokemon is Ditto. I like Ditto. You can just become anything. I also like uh, Jigglypuff. Just because I watched the cartoon and Jigglypuff always used to fucking create so much chaos when he came in. Like whenever he came in, whenever Jigglypuff came on the scene, you know some shit was about to go down. Like you knew that he was just there to make some mischief. And I respect him for it every step of the way. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm trying to read these questions. I've had some really, really cool stuff in the P.O. box. Really amazing things. That are, an amazing piece of art came through the other day. Um, but I have all sorts of incredible things like camera gear. Someone made like a miniature guitar model. It was beautiful. Uh, just amazing, like... Um, just, just loads of letters that have come through that have got some really beautiful things. Um, some engagement proposals. So I've, I've now got many, many husbands and wives. Um, yeah, all the good stuff. It's, yeah, it's, been, it's been really nice, actually. It's been like Christmas every time I go over to the post um, to the post box and pick up those parcels. It's, it's a lot. Um, so yeah, anyone who's sent, those, sent anything over, I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. Big up yourselves. Um, got some jewelry. Loads of shit. It's cool. Yeah. How does one become an extra in my videos? Um, it depends on the video, obviously, because um, it, usually the scope of the videos we do is quite small and there's like, like a, f a few people involved. But when we do these big videos like Animal Flow, um, I'll start posting more about it. The only problem is if I was to put that on Instagram and I needed 20 people, there'd probably be about a thousand people that want to do it. So it's like, where do you begin? In like being like you, 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 and you. So it's it's a difficult one. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to answer that really because uh, I don't I don't I hate being like selective with these things. Maybe it's like first come first serve, but yeah, I don't know. I'll think about it more in the future. Uh, 
Um, what have we got? Sick Boy Jacket's coming very soon. Very, very, very soon. Yeah. We just, uh, we want to make a little bit of breathing space for this song, Suicide, but we've got all the jackets ready to go. So they'll be coming out very, very soon. So we're just, um, yeah, we're giving the last song a little bit of space to have its time. And then we're going to release the jackets. I do like Harry Mack. I think he's fucking talented, man. I think he's obviously one of the best freestylers on the scene. Uh, yeah, he's cool, man. I like, I, I, I've had entertainment watching his videos. Um, I'm not playing Glastonbury, unfortunately. Nope. Health has um, become a problem um, in the way of me doing that. So I'm not going to play Glastonbury. It's, it sucks, but it is what it is. Next year. There's always next year. Uh, I, I'm still not smoking. I haven't smoked since January. I had one moment of weakness in, uh, in my birthday, <laughs> the 29th of March, where I may have smoked some cigarettes. Just being honest, you've got to be honest about these things. Um, and then I quit again. So I haven't smoked anything since January. A few in March, and then nothing since then. So as a like long-term smoker, I think I'm doing pretty well. How did I quit SIGs? Um, a combination of like knowing that I'm... The doctor obviously said, you cannot smoke while you're doing this treatment. That was obviously a huge thing because... You know, like, I'm in another country trying to fix my fucking autoimmunity. Like, there's a lot on the line here. Having something that serious to, like, weigh against it, huge. He also put me on Wellbutrin, um, which I was a little bit nervous about because I don't normally get on with psych meds. Um, that actually helped me quit. I didn't get, like, the such... Every time I tried to quit before that, I'd get, like, such low moods and anxiety that it was hard. But the Wellbutrin helped. Uh, I was on a really low dose of it, but it generally... After a couple of weeks, I was like, okay, now it's just like mental craving. It's not really like this physical dependency. So it helped. And I was, I was a smoker. Like I'm not, I was like, I don't even want to tell you how much I smoked today, but it was disgusting. Like I was a chain, anyone who watched my Twitches before December will know how many, like I just sit there like fucking chain smoking. and just stupid, stupid. But it was kind of like my coping mechanism. I sp smoke, smoking weed as well for my, um, for my pain in my body. Um, for some reason, smoking helps. Like that's that's what it was, and um, it's always a bit of a crutch. So I used to do it a lot. Uh, Fibonacci. See, ooh, okay, we're getting to the lyrics of the songs. I see the world through Fibonacci sequences and double dutch. So, so Fibonacci is trying to make, trying to create order out of chaos, and double dutch is chaos. Essentially, it's it's an opposing. Um, it's a self-contradictory line. If you see the world through Fibonacci sequences, creating holy order out of chaos, and then double dutch is a language that makes no sense, so it's confusion. So um, that's why I liked it. It's a little bit of an oxymoron line. It's, it's kind of like a self-contradictory line, um, which for me epitomizes being a human being. <laughs> we think we've got it figured out and we're all so confused as fuck. So that's, that's, that's kind of the sentiment of the line for me. Skincare routine. Ooh. Um, I, I just use, uh, you know, The Ordinary. There's this brand called The Ordinary. Do really cheap fucking skincare shit. I just use um, retinol at night. That's a, that's a good one. And then niacinamide as well, which is like, it's like niacinamide. And that's, that's it, basically. I don't, I don't really use moisturizer. Um, I don't really like sun cream either because it just like stays. I've got like the skin that doesn't absorb shit. So if I put sunscreen on, I just like look. Like I've just got white shit on my face or my face just looks mad like sweaty all day. So I don't really do that. So retinol and niacinamide is what I use. Do we own Shara Kamraig? Do we own Shara Kamraig? Tippenbach. And do we own Shara Kamraig ever? And Mount, well, Mount Canada, Mount... Uh, in England, I'm like Wanglish, and uh, yeah, do you get to tip and back? Do you do you practice your moi? Practice your mo moi? Because um, man, I never be sure I can ever. So it's gotten kind of bad because I have no time to practice. But I used to be really fluent. Yeah.
Hang on. I'm, did I find it mentally taxing to finish off suicide? Um, no, but I found it mentally taxing releasing it. <laughs> to hearing everybody's response to it was more mentally taxing than um, actually writing it, funnily enough. It's like how people received it was actually the thing that whew, was quite exhausting. Not in a bad way, but just like it's a lot hearing about so many experiences that are very heavy. So that was the taxing thing for me. It, it wasn't because uh, I think as as artists, you have like this natural empathetic state where because um, it's our job to be empathetic, right? We've got to write in such a way that people relate to it. So you have to be good at empathy. And so when you're reading so many like painful stories, it's hard to take that on board, especially when you've catalyzed a space for that. Yeah. So that was the taxing thing. Yes, there are more tales coming. I've got, I was literally playing Sam one this morning. So that the tale that's coming next, it's not actually related to the tale of Jenny and Screech. The, um, it's a new tale and it's, it's kind of set in this universe, in this Marvel cinematic universe that I've created. Um, so it's, it's a different story and it's a two-parter. Totally different story. Totally different character. Um, but it's cool. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get that done this year sometime. Money Game Part 3 is the priority, but... Yeah, there's a new tale coming, and I'm excited. Yeah. Toes or fingers? Or, wait, what? <laughs> wait. Oh, toes for fingers or fingers for toes? Oh, obviously fingers for toes, man. That's like a no-brainer. Imagine having a little stumpy... That's like an easy question. Imagine a little stumpy toes on your hands. That'd be fucking uh, outrageous. Like, if you had toes on your feet fingers on your feet the only difficulty would be finding shoes that don't look ridiculous but like you could you could do some monkey shit man you could just, or you could do loads of stuff with your feet if you had like fingers on the end of them i could be here just like typing away and i don't know playing guitar at the same time oh god it's so hard to read this bah have I been in touch with Chinchilla? Yeah, Daisy. We catch up all the time, man. I'm actually seeing Daisy next week, so I'm traveling back to the UK to film this Money Game video, and um, I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna link up, hang out a bit. She's my fucking sister from another Mister, man. So I'm sure I'll see. I'm sure I'll see Chinchilla. She's the, she's she's the, my homie. Um. My other homies are here. Should I bring Sam in? Do you want to see Sam? I'll bring him in like a, like a, uh, an exhibit. Should we bring in the Sam? Bring in the Sam. Bring in the Sam. Bring. All right. Bear with me. Sam, they say no one to your face. Yeah. And Josh actually come and fucking get the homies in. <laughs> yeah. Give the people what they want. They want Sam. Sam, 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 Sam. Oh, and Josh. Josh, 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 Josh. Oh, we yeah, got two sure. two for the price. One, baby. The boys. Yeah. The boys isles. I need to get more more of these fucking SM7Bs, to be honest. Wait, maybe if I crank it and then put it in the middle, we'll be good. Yeah, this is, this is what I'm dealing with. You can't really read the questions very well. Yeah, that's intense. <laughs> yeah, it's intense. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, get get comfy, Samuel. Straddle the boys. Yeah, maybe if I maybe if I point this a little bit this way. <laughs> well, well, ladies, feast your eyes on this. <laughs> Soak it in. Yeah, this is this is the this is what you came for. The boys are back. Oh look, they're going fucking nuts for you guys. Yeah. The Sam and the Josh experience, guys. Have you got any questions for the homies? Um, then I'm sure we won't be able to read any of them, but try. This is this this is with slow something called slow mode enabled. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what you can do surely is just like scroll and then it like keeps it slightly still. 
Uh, I tried doing. Oh yeah, it kind of works. It's like Babe Station. I just want to say Babe Station. Should we? Should Should we kiss? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> do we? Uh, do we? Do we get naked? Yeah, if you're not on the live section bit of it, it looks like it holds. All right, cool. Shoot, shoot us with a question. People aren't saying questions; they're just shouting. Uh, do you watch? Oh yeah, we watch Bushy Peas. Yeah. Banging. Yeah, we appreciate it, Bushy Peas. Yeah. And we appreciate appreciate Black Pegasus as well. He's a, he's the boy. He's a homie as well. Babe Station, uh, busking in the, the does does my perfection drive you insane? Uh, <laughs> it depends how early in the morning it is. Because right. uh, yeah, money game at like five in the morning slightly starts to drive you insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but generally, it's good. It's productive perfectionism. Mm. Productionism. Hey, Sam, Ren and Ren. Josh, what's up with the Netflix series? Well, that is a really good question that we would all like to know the answer to. Yeah, we're, we're cooking it. We're, the okay, the yeah. ideas are a-brewing. We've got, we've got a lot of the scripts, actually. So it's, it's really now just um, bringing it to life and um, finding a way to do it. I think we're going to make the pilot and then we're going to bring it to them. Um, the pilot's cool. So we're just trying to find a space, carving out a space to make that come to life. Uh, how do you like working with Ren? Is he a diva? Yes. Yes. Like 100%, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yeah. There's, um, I mean, yes and no. It's like one of those things is like, obviously you've got to be kind of self appreciating to get your vision to life and get it across the line. Um, and then, but I think Ren is like, is a true collaborator and is very open to ideas from everyone who's involved. Um, which is just brilliant to like work with but then I think that so it's like you can be self-appreciating in the sense of I suppose diva's quite a I don't yeah the diva for me means like somebody who's just like I need this or I cannot do this sort of thing okay yeah well you're not a diva in that sense but I think you definitely demand certain things so that things can be reached to the highest level possible yeah 100% so I think in terms of like a diva probably not but then in terms of like that kind of same concept of being like, I need this to make this vision come to life. I need this to happen yeah. and to hit this certain level. I think the expectation is there, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's not in the same way you would generally say like a diva. Yeah, I want, my, I want my only green M&Ms. Yeah, where's my blue Ferrari, <laughs> you know, at like... No, no, no. No, yeah, it's more about striving for a level of quality rather than it being and, like, and not yeah. wanting anything less than that. Yeah, if it's not right, we don't do it. Yeah. Which means we do stuff. Yeah. Which is worth it every time I think that we've done it. I think there's a lot. And every, and every time that we've gone like, okay, this is okay, could we do better? It generally eventually ends up better. Do you know what I mean? So there's no point. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. It's like it, inability to settle, I suppose. Yeah, it's mm. like being, that's good enough or it could be better. The, that's like the, the thing is, we've generally never been like, that's good enough. Yeah. we have like, no, we'll go again. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Um, what else we got slow mode uh, are you uh, we've got slow mode on this is slow mode apparently <laughs> what's Fuck the sake. most embarrassing Ren story you can tell Sam the most embarrassing yeah. <coughs> oh fun uh, thanks for these questions guys have you got have you got a good one on your by the way guys can you hear the boys alright hang on can you hear the boys okay or do they need to no. Not okay. When have you talked? Just lean towards the mic, basically. All right. I'll, we'll uh, just clamber on top of you to talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. 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 Okay. Um, what was the Ren embarrassing stories? Yeah. Um, have you got? You've probably got more than me, because you lived with him for a while. Um. Yeah, I didn't want to say any actually embarrassing ones. Oh yeah. I don't. How I don't, know, I don't know, fuck, mate. You can say whatever you um, want. Um. None are coming to mind. You actually have no shame, so I don't yeah. think... So, that so, yeah, so that's the thing, is, like, they're not embarrassing because Ren is, like, will ask you to tell them. So it's, <laughs> like... <laughs> so there's no really embarrassing stories as, yeah. as such, but there's just... There's there's some eventful stories. Um, there's things that if we did them, that they'd probably be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I'm a fun... I can't think of any... It's one of those ones that's like... Well, other than it's because I'm ridiculously boring. 
No, it's just like, but they just embarrassing doesn't really like sit with us. Like, oh, if you go run naked into the the sea and stuff, some people would consider that extremely embarrassing. But then it's not even. We literally did that two days ago. No, no, that's what I mean. (laughs) There was the time that you ordered the bed for Violet's tail. Oh, that's pretty good story. That is. Yeah, that. That's not. It's it's not really embarrassing, but it's a good story. Yeah. 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 It could have been embarrassing. We had built the whole set. Yeah. If there was like a lot yeah. of other people. So there. so let's just start at the beginning. So we get to set to shoot Violet's Tale. Yeah. We turn up with the bed. Me and Josh arrive early to kind of do a lot of the set dressing. Um, and then we just build the bed and then realize it's a child's bed. So it sits like a foot from the ground and is like up to your knees. And um, yeah, so we call up Ren. It's like, yeah, Ren, uh, the bed's a little bit on the small side. Um, you know, I don't know if this is going to really work. And then I was like, no, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's it's a, <laughs> can you send me a picture of the bed? They fucking send this picture over and it's like the smallest fucking little bed that you've ever seen. And I was like, oh shit, this video is fucked. So fair play, Josh took the bed and he, he what did he, you like? like Painters, trellises and ratchet straps and yeah, everything else. Leans on mic so they can't hear you. Yeah, straps and trellises and everything else we could just to put it up and it was so... Rickety. So if you if you watch Violet's Tale, go back and watch Violet's Tale. That bed is basically essentially levitating on like two little stands underneath it. That's not an adult sized bed. It's a child's bed that we propped up because we didn't have enough time to find a fucking bed. So um, it, it was it's on like these weird stands. So I'm like lying on this, <laughs> like too much weight on one side. The whole thing can fucking topple. But yeah, interesting interesting fact about that Violet's Tale bed. It's not um, <laughs> it doesn't have a mattress and it doesn't have legs either. It was just like hovering. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kids bed. Set cost us about, I think, a hundred pounds. Yeah, Violet. So how much? The whole yeah, the whole video didn't cost that. It was like five hundred quid. Yeah, whole video. The curtain, the bed, and then we like things like holding up the IV strip. The IV bag like, was actually an enema bag as well. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and it was it was hanging off a lighting stand that like no one has ever clocked. That it's just like a lighting stand. And and that and that, like, and that where where the doctor's room was that was actually my mate's bike shed. So that yeah. there was about ten bikes on it that weren't the like because he was in the, the they were in an apartment. So we like we got these bolts and we we fuck without telling anyone in the apartment that we were doing this. <laughs> Because there was like 20 different flats in there. We unbolt this fucking bike rack in the thing. Move the whole thing behind with us. With like five bikes attached to it. <laughs> with five bikes. With bike locks attached to the bike rack. We move the whole bike rack behind us so we could shoot this. Because it looked like a doctor's room. So we wanted to. So that's not actually a hospital. It's, it's a bike shed. That we weren't supposed to be in. That we that's weren't supposed to be in. embarrassing though to see the bed come up to like knee height. And realize yeah. that yeah. Like breaking into a place and now having to do it again. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yes, of course. We got full legal uh, documents signed and everything. What happened at the end of the bus for that animal? Well, so there's a thing when you're going along on a bus that it goes around corners. And when you've got a really heavy camera on your shoulder, um, it's quite easy to fall over. So at the end of Animal uh, Flow Live, yeah, I basically fell over. Fuck, uh, you stacked it, mate. I stacked it. I stacked it into the chair, and uh, fortunately, I really like it. But yeah. um, it's just all right. Yeah, no, definitely, just yeah. like I prefer it with the fall, mate. Yeah, it's just character. It makes it real. And then the yeah. the, the fact that the bus goes off and says you have reached your destination or whatever it is, and yeah. like that classic voice, it yeah. really works. So Someone well. says, "Have I ever been arrested?" I've got a good story, actually. So I've o- I've only when I, when I was a teen I got an, I got an, an antisocial behaviour order an ASBO for drinking on the streets that's just me being a delinquent little teenager but the time that I like it's so really funny so like for Money Game the first one if you've seen that video I'm like walking around with a baseball bat so I I wanted to practice for it so I went to my gym because they've got these big mirrors so I, I went to the gym with this baseball bat I had my headphones in and I was rehearsing the whole scene where I've got the baseball bat on my shoulder I'm jumping around with it whatever so I, after that I finish up I'm like okay I've got my rehearsal in I'm walking home and I've got this bat on my shoulder I've got the headphones in and I'm I'm saying the lyrics out loud on the walk home because I'm trying to get these lyrics drilled into my head I'm swinging the bat around looking just a little bit probably dodgy as fuck anyway i walk into a supermarket on the way home to get some uh, groceries and i still got the bat on me and then i've got i get my groceries i walk back out two armed fo- they keep in mind this is the uk so this is quite a rare thing two fully armed people with like automatic two fully armed policemen with uh semi-automatic guns 
come up to me, grab me, grab the bat off me, push me against the wall, face first, arms and cuffs behind me. There's a scene of people surrounding me. They they told me that they'd received six different phone calls of a unhinged crazy man walk about to rob Sainsbury's with a with a with a baseball bat. So uh, <laughs> I didn't connect the two, and then when when the dots connected, I started laughing, and they were like, "Why are you laughing?" And I explained what was going on, and I I like I I had to pull up YouTube and be like, "Look." <laughs> This is me because Jenny's tail was out at that point. I'd point and I was like, "Look, I'm just a new fucking musician," and I'm, I was rehearsing for this song. Eventually, they had to, they had to run a criminal uh, background check on me and stuff, but they they let me go in the end. Um, <laughs> it was just fucking funny. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> oh yeah, I learned my lesson. Don't run around Brighton um, waving a baseball bat around. Apparently, I just loved how surprised you were. What's that? I just loved how surprised you were. I just didn't clock it, it, it I, I, but I, I didn't know at the time that it was illegal to ha- hold a baseball bat. Apparently, you, unless it's in a bag, yeah. you're not allowed to brandish anything that looks like a weapon in public. Probably common sense. I didn't know that at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so I was lucky it wasn't America. I probably got yeah. a fucking shot, bro. <laughs> like, I wouldn't trust you walking down the street. I would, I would, I would have probably gotten taken out. if I, Yeah. yeah. Um, did you see any good questions in that time period? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, do I ever cyber stalk any of my fans? <laughs> I don't know if stalk's the right word. Sometimes there's like, you know, an attractive person that pops up and I'm like, check out the pictures. But <laughs> I think stalk's a heavy word. <laughs> it's appreciating people. A- appreciation. That makes it sound way less pervy. I appreciate. You only stalk in person, really, don't you? I only stalk in person, yeah. I only follow people home in person. I'll pick somebody and, uh, yeah, that that's... Uh, that's a whole different thing. Born in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, uh, what's his name? Joe, my idol. <laughs> Joe Goldberg. Sol- solidarity. Um, what else have we got? Any chance of a gag reel of unused footage? We could try. I'm sure there's lots. Well, I've what got, I've got loads. What we usually do, which is a terrible thing, is select the one take to save space on the hard drive and delete everything else yeah. um, that's what I normally do which gets rid of all that juicy gold but maybe I need to stop doing that yeah, yeah I literally one deleted anyway. one of those for Violet the other day uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Hard it's like you look at hard drive and you're like oh that video is out now I can delete all this <laughs> which which is probably really valuable to some people in the future yeah. but I'm just like eh fuck it get rid of it yeah I need to get some like backups yeah oh hang on what else we got Hufflepuff or Jigglypuff? <laughs> Still Jigglypuff, bro. Hufflepuff's a weak house. <laughs> uh. Someone says, do you still couch surf? I'm literally sleeping on an e- a blow-up air mattress this time, which is a huge step up Upgrade. from Ren's sofa. Um, the and amount- nicer than mine. And, and nicer than uh, Josh's. But, um, oh yeah, Josh is a terrible air mattress for this day. And mine, mine's like a level up and it's quite good. But yeah, the amount of sofas, I've, I've stayed on pretty much every sofa you've had in the last, yeah, like 12, 13 years. Yeah. Which is, there's a lot of sofas I've surfed. Yeah. But um, we really need you to make it and get spare beds. Yeah, yeah. soon we'll be leveling up, man, with the with the penthouse. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a donation link, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Get the, let's get these boys their own bedrooms. Someone said mod or a rocker. I reckon mod, mate. To be honest, I love my rock music, but like mod, I'm a mod. What are we saying? Mods or rockers? Mods is like ska and punk. And yeah, I'm definitely, a, I'm definitely a modder. Down I'm, with the mods. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of like dub and stuff. And ska was prob- like quite an original like thing for me one of my first gigs was scar so it's like that i went to so definitely, mm. definitely. Uh, i love that thing. i love the fashion as well man yeah but yeah brighton dna there as well yeah yeah so the, the, none of us are from. the uh yeah yeah <laughs> exactly nah but it's fucking it's sick man dot martins and the uh, the old suspenders someone's asking for your p.o box and everything oh yeah the p.o box hang on uh it's on um I'll put, wait, I'll put a link to it in a second. It's on the YouTube community page, but you've got to scroll down to infinity, which I'm about to do for you. Um, what are we saying as well? Hang on. 
see, see, Sam, see if you can find any questions while I just scroll down here. People are asking if Josh is the pig butcher, which just really isn't true. He's pulling focus on, on those videos and doing lighting. Yeah. Yeah, Josh Josh is the fucking all-around handyman extraordinaire, man. He does a lot of stuff. He does lighting. He does uh, first day seeing. Um, he does sourcing things. He's just generally there to be sexy and give everybody... Moral support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but Josh has actually filmed a bunch of stuff as well. Um, he's filmed a lot of the busking sessions you've seen, a lot of the big push busking sessions you've seen. 50% of those are pretty much always filmed by Josh. Um, don't You've done some Remains videos as well. You don't, you've done my favourite Remain video, actually. Yeah, and then, I love that. Um, yeah, what's it's it called? So nice. I did a couple of big push videos. As Which well, right? what's the what's the remain? Oh, let's just watch it now because I want to bring people to remain. This is just is a Josh video, and it is my favorite remain song as well. Let's let's just go there. I fucking love this song. Let's do it. So this is a Josh video, and this is also remain, whom some of you I hope know as the amazing sexual being, uh, French guitarist from the. Big push. He's doing a lot of his solo stuff. I recommend subscribing to his channel if you haven't already. Um, but we're going to check out this video. I love I love this song. I love this video as well, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, you did smash it. It's at the end, man. Yeah, I will get goosebumps at the end every time. In a cloud of try and drink howling A velvet sky wearing a petal blue We're moving in a haze, the clouds are falling The beauty around was never true it all feels oh, 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 oh. It all feels oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so this is an entire set build. They uh, <laughs> built the whole house. Every blade Don't around. be scared, yeah. we're swimming <laughs> under. <laughs> What's up with that? Whipping black and white rainbow <laughs> Every day is an endless summer The tree of life no longer grows It all feels
fucking love that. Yeah, that's 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 the one with the camera up on his um ceiling. Yeah. ceiling. Oh, let's go on webcam again. Bring it back, Morrissey vibes. Yeah, I think my remains a big Morrissey fan. All right. Uh, uh, uh. Once you scroll up a little bit, it stops there. Da, 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 da. Have you got any more questions for the boys? Brrr. Nah, people are more interested in your love. Nah, life. do do Josh and wait, what? Do Josh and Sam have favorite video of our ends? What's your favorite video? Money game. Money game. Uh, money game part three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> hyping that shit already, boy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably, probably money game, just because the the amount of just we put into it, and mm. then when we finished, like the rewarding, how rewarding that felt, um, was definitely a big one. I do really, really like Illust. Illust of Illust time. time yeah, sick just one. in terms of like a music video, I think that's maybe the best. But in terms of like live session, definitely probably maybe money game. Um, Jenny's was fun as well. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually really like doing Violet's Tale, man. I thought Violet's Tale was well fun. Oh, um, yeah, no, Violet's is the, yeah. Yeah, or oh, well, the whole, those whole tales. Yeah, just the tales. Yeah. I think that's just because of the journey of it. Sam or Josh, what's your favourite part of the videography process? The Probably definitely the actually doing it in production. Like, so once you've done all the prep and you've done everything you can and then you're just on set kind of actually creating the magic, it's definitely my favorite part um mr josh yeah. i think when we get a close like a take that's really close to what we're looking for and we know that it's like all right we can actually definitely do it we're here we're all in the headspace it's gonna happen but it's not which yet. takes it yeah, gonna yeah. be yeah. right is it gonna be the next three takes next two takes obviously we do everything in one take anyway but mm. yeah I yeah. think that's definitely the most exciting bit for me. When, when you all feel like that synchronicity and you're, you've hit that sweet spot where you know it's coming soon sort yeah. of thing. When you get that yeah, it's a nice moment. When you know it's just like just a couple of tiny, tiny tweaks. It's good enough already, but there's like, we can all see just that little bit of distance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly yeah, what yeah that's a nice feeling. Yeah. And we can all see that as well at the same time. You're on the home stretch. Yeah, I do like that as well. And it's normally like, it's like when you're not there, it's really painful because you're like, oh fuck, this feels so clunky. And then it just kind of, everything just like falls into this like, Almost like collaborative flow state. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. Someone was just asking if I enjoyed doing power. So, <laughs> I I prefer being behind the camera, but it was a lot of fun filming. But then I feel like I, if I did it again, I would definitely listen to the song for about three weeks <laughs> nonstop beforehand. Because by the end, I just couldn't help but like miming along, and I definitely could have known the lyrics a bit better. Um, <laughs> And I definitely feel like I, would, looking back at it, there's points where I think I look well awkward. Nah, man. We but it. if we did a power two, then then, yeah. you know, I'd level it up. Return of the power, man. Yeah. Yeah, we could do another song, man. Like we've been spoken about this. The sequel. <laughs> yeah. Power sequel. Power two. Um, what are we saying? Uh, what we got? Favorite camera? My favorite camera? Yes. Um, well, a lot of a lot of our videos were shot on my Arri Alexa Plus, um, and I have loved that camera that weighs about a metric ton, um, and has broken me many a time. And I really enjoy that in its own way. It's really rewarding. That sounds like a, a toxic relationship where you're still in, in love with the abuser. Yeah, but that, this is why I'm getting a new camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, yeah. So I really like that. The Arri Rangers of cameras definitely have the nicer skin tones. So that's definitely probably my favourite. Um, but, you know, every film and project's different, so it requires different tools. <laughs> What we're saying, some, uh, um, well, I'm trying to fucking catch these questions. Well, let's scroll up. Stop. Stop. Yeah, do you want me to do it? Yes. You're struggling a little bit. There. Stop. Oh, you've got to scroll up quite a lot. Favourite one-take film? Ah! Uh, Victoria, we watched it last night, literally. Yeah. 
I think there's only one. There, there is only one one take film, isn't there? There's a couple. Is there? But they're not. They're not like feature films. They are. Are they? There's like one that was like a live streamed feature film. Oh really? Yeah, with what's his name? I can't remember what it's called. Oh. But, um, but yeah, Victoria. 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 Big up. Incredible film. Um, <laughs> Children of the Moon Part Two. <laughs> yeah. That was the first music video we shot. I, I, I'm going to have to thank my parents for the biology they have passed on towards the eyeballs. Make the eyeballs. Uh, mainly my dad. He's he's responsible. So shout out Matt Perry. Not the Matt Perry from Friends. My dad, <laughs> Matt Perry, who is also a legend, but in a different, yeah. very different way. Uh, many legends. Yeah. Many, many legends. Oh, they're all on the eyes now. Oh, geez. He does have very pretty eyes. I get lost in them a lot. It's very distracting when he's filming. <laughs> Yes. Having a slippery one. A slippery one with the boys. <laughs> Having a slippery cold one with the boys. Yeah. How insufferable is Ren now that he's popping off? I was always insufferable. It, yeah, you've always been insufferable. I was going to say, like, nothing, is, nothing has changed. <laughs> the struggle is real and consistent. Um, and I don't see that ever changing. Like, now just I other know. people don't know about it, but they know you. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's nice. You're kind of starting to get over your own success and... It's, you're becoming a normal person. I feel like we're having a friendship for the first yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's brought me right down to earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have thought it did it the other way, but. No, it, it, it had the opposite yeah. effect, yeah. Yeah. What, what else we got? Drown us in the questions. Give me the questions. Matthew Perry is. What did I say? Canadian. <laughs> 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 Uh, kneecaps or shoulder blade, boys? Shoulder blades. Okay. I like having kneecaps. But yeah, am I about to lose them? Or is it, <laughs> or is it, what do I prefer? It feels like a, you want it in the kneecaps or you want it in the shoulder blades sort of question. Oh, but in your kneecaps, <sighs> it hurt. Like, yeah, no one wants to be kneecaps. Yeah. Yeah, shoulder. Yeah, I'll I take shoulder for a shot. I'll take a shot to shoulder the shoulder. Reference. Yeah. Visually. Yeah. Yeah, a nice scar on the shoulder would look pretty badass. Yeah, shoot me in the shoulder. Or was it like, what makes you choose a girl? Well, it's boiling point. Her kneecaps or her shoulder blade. What? What am I doing? Oh, I'm, I'm definitely a shoulder blade man. What, is that like an ass or boobs question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's them kneecaps, man. I'm, I'm a sucker for, the, sucker for a good pair of kneecaps. Um, did boiling Point as another one-shot film. Have you seen Boiling Point? Never seen that. Good. It's good, it's good. Really good. I know, okay. the, I know the colorist from it. So, my next I'll, ch- I'll check it out. But, if you've um, ever worked he's... in a restaurant as well, like it's probably the best film. Sick. So um, how uh, boobs or ass? This this old oh, old yeah. lifelong philosophical question that goes down to the. Uh, Is this where um, I'm getting shot now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna shoot you in your tits or your ass, Josh. Choose carefully, my friend. Can I go fifty-fifty? <laughs> I think my butt could take it. I like it all, to be honest, and man. Half a bullet in my boob. And I like half it all. In my sure. Nice. Yeah. A ricochet. Yeah. There you go. I hope that's answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, the GoFundMe is still active, but there is um, I there's there's enough donations to carry me through. So if anyone's thinking about donating, stop. <laughs> there's there's enough. Um, I have got enough money there to carry me through these health treatments um and if anything major could come up if i was to have like a stem cell transplant again or something like that there's more than enough there as well so thank you also everybody who has donated but uh, you really do not need to do it anymore just the best way you can support me is music merch all that sort of stuff that'd be brilliant um stora i love stora boys they're wicked i love that free running scene when i was spending a lot of time in bed like trapped not being able to move much for some reason, it brought me a lot of joy watching people like push their bodies to extreme. It's like you watching cooking shows, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, no, but th- honestly, I, lo- I love those. I've met them in real life as well, and they're legends. Um, Ren needs, an needs an OnlyFans. <laughs> I'm the only fan you need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do it. Let's get let's get sexy with it. <laughs> Why not? The fans of us. You know, it's supply and demand, man. Yeah. It's, it's supply and demand. Take as many shells as you can find. 
um how did we meet um we did meet in a field me and yeah me and sam met in the field and this is a true story we met in the field i don't know i'm trying to remember the first time i like met you properly because you were like you were like a little bit younger at the time so i was I, like i remember it very clearly. i was hanging out with the big boys you tell it then so i remember very clearly being i was camping in like away from him a little bit with another group of people but i remember like he was just about playing music always as he always has and that doesn't stop doing really at any opportunity but he was playing some music and it was I could hear it in the background and it sounded cool and then one evening he ended up playing freckled angels around like a campfire of like 25 of us um and i remember just like absolutely weeping my eyes out um and it was like yeah that was my first like strong memory of Ren was that kind of moment. And I was like a 15, 16 year old kid who hadn't like cried in like two years and then just like broke me. Um, so yeah, it was, it's, it's stuck with me a long time that, that, that moment, but yeah, that's, and then Josh, I met Josh in, on a shoot for Evil Genius Records. Mm-hmm. Um, in my flat. I was just in, yeah, in your flat shooting a, a video with, for Tony Humphrey, um, who Josh used to live with. And then he was like, oh, let me give you a lift home. Um, and then he wooed me up. And then I got him on everything I did from then on, really, for a long time. What went wrong was yeah, the second and then, video on that. Yeah, what went wrong was the next kind of video Josh worked on with me. and then So that's how I met Josh. And then, yeah. What went wrong, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was my car. And that was yeah, that was Josh's car and what went wrong. That was a, that's a good that's a good story as well. We didn't have any permission. Well, I mean, we had legal documents. <laughs> What's your word? In? We had lots of legal documents, and we we rented out the entire of Brighton to get to make sure that we had permission on the roads. And um, what we definitely didn't do is we didn't strap a ten thousand ca- pound camera to the bonnet of the car. We um and we didn't drive around at three in the morning, um getting shots of that. Um, on the roads that we legally rented out, um, <laughs> the car didn't fail its MOT for not having working brakes. Like yeah, later yeah, yeah, that didn't happen. The car didn't fail its MOT before we, we took it on the road. It was safe, and um, we, yeah, we didn't. Um, there's lots of things we didn't do for that shoot, and it it, it turned out really well. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Someone's asking if you guys are roasting in your long sleevers. It's actually all right in the flat. Mm. But um, yeah, it's been really gorgeous here. It was like 33 yeah. yesterday or something. Someone said, Wait. Um, am I bisexual? I'm, I'd love to be bisexual because I'd have double the choice. But unfortunately, I just don't like penises that much. Sorry, go- sorry, boys. Someone's decided that I'm Sam as well. No, that's Josh. That's, that's Sam Josh. Sam wearing the long sleeves. No, I'm not. That's Sam. I'm Ren. <laughs> 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 um... Someone asked if me and Josh are working on anything else at the moment. Are you working on anything else, Mon? Well, how about I answer what you're doing at the moment and you answer what I'm doing at the moment? Do you know well enough what I'm doing? No. Okay, you you're talk about you. I'm doing I'm doing a hell of a lot. I've got a short film uh, I'm shooting next weekend when I get back from Canada about uh, an Iranian refugee. Um, that's funny. I also have a short film about an Iranian refugee. Oh, yeah, that's because you're Sam. <laughs> yeah yeah easy mistake um but yes yeah, so that's going to be really fun and then we've got uh doing money game and maybe another video right. with ren um and then i've just lo- we're launching uh, me and a couple of friends a commercial production company making uh, adverts and commercials and uh, we're launching that in the next couple of weeks so that's taken up a lot of my time um but yeah lots of interesting things in the pipeline let's go um so very excited and then josh you're exploring the old world of uh, 3D. 3D. Yeah. Go on. Talk to the people. Let them know what you're up to. I mean, just doing 3D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh is exploring the 3D world. He's going to be our, our 3D magician in no time. Yeah. Um, and then crewing up with you as well over the next and then, yeah. little bit. Then helping yeah. out all of my projects. And he's, he's coming. The, the next thing is Money Game Part 3. We're all heading over to the UK on Monday to execute yeah. that. It's very... It's a very ambitious video, man. It's probably the most ambitious so far, so it's exciting. And we got we got the dream team for it. Everyone's calling you shy. Are you shy? I think that's reasonable. No. <laughs> Don't be shy. Should we, we can get naked and we can, you know, babe station it, yeah. 
Oh, and Wolf, Wolf Johnson will be there. Big up Wolf Johnson. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be, um, he's traveling down to the UK for it. We pulled it off. We raised plenty for him to come. Um, put him up in accommodation, get him over to the site. So yeah, that you'll be seeing that behind the scenes very, very soon. Very cool that we made that happen. Come on. Let's go. And did they fuck up? Right, what have we got? What, what flashing what lights? Who was flashing the lights in the higher end? Did they fuck up? Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> it was me and this guy called Jacob uh, Hello, I think his surname is um, but yeah we were both operating a light each or well two lights each the lights you see in shot and the lights uh, rigged to the ceiling um, and yeah it's we didn't I wouldn't say we fucked up um, I think we did quite a good job with them I mean it was difficult getting used to because one of them was a very dodgy setup of just unplugging and plugging in by a plug turning it to turn it on yeah, and, yeah. and flicker it and stuff a very very high quality production yeah. value we we bring to these films yeah, yeah. The in out plug <laughs> if anyone did, if it was on wondering how we achieved that effect <laughs> uh kubrick or uh what's his name tarantino probably kubrick for me uh you uh Overall, probably Kubrick. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Joshy boy? But oh, it's tough. It's probably got to be though. You, it's right. got. It's yeah. It's got to be. But like, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and some of the other like Tarantino's are amazing. Yeah, I I I would say that Inglorious Bastards for me is probably one of my favorite films that I yeah. put above a Kubrick movie. But I still yeah. think Kubrick's a better director. I feel like his ideas and cinematography for me I prefer anyway but even though that I put, yeah. put Inglorious Bastards like but, but they're, they're also from very different eras of filmmaking so the mm. capacity and what they can actually achieve technology wise is very different so it'll be interesting to see in like 10 years how well uh, the Tarantino's films stand up I think they'll be timeless bro they will be timeless they're but, but timeless. Kubrick's are Kubrick's are already time timeless. Are already timeless. Yeah. And it's like, I think more of Kubrick's are potentially going to be timeless than Tarantino's films. But I feel like we yeah. also may be a bit more familiar with a lot of Tarantino's references than Kubrick's references, which, like, for me, is quite a big thing. It's like just the, how crazy original mm. his stuff is. There's not yeah. Yeah. stuff that I know that well of its reference material, whereas Tarantino, you yeah. know it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there is a lot of originality. I I see what you're saying, though. There's a lot of, like, Western influence in um, Tarantino stuff. Kubrick's is a bit more of an anomaly. Like, yeah. Yeah. I like Eyes Wide Shut, fucking Clockwork Orange, all those films. It's so... Amazing. Yeah. Um, Okay, what else? Um, People have been asking a couple times if Suicide's video was made with AI. Yeah, it was. So, um, so Suicide... Well, it, it wasn't it... So... We uh, Lewis used AI, but he also is an animator, so he also direct used a lot of his own skills to bring make that what it was. Um, yeah, it was just something I wanted to explore. There's such a narrative at the moment surrounding AI that I thought it would be quite a cool thing to lean into because of that narrative and because of my stance on it as well. Is that I believe that it's more of a tool than a threat. Um, yeah, I, so I was like, you know what, I wanna, I wanna lean into this, and I got Lewis to lean into that world of AI. I know that it's a very, it's, it's quite a controversial thing to do almost at the moment because some people are, believe that it's a negative thing for artists, and um, I've got a, p- quite a particular stance on that. I'll go into you're, a second. You're, you're also using a lot of videos that you've shot anyway, so yeah. it's kind of like it's more heightening what you've got already. And exactly. With the animating you're already doing, it's using it as like, it's like color grading and VFX. You, yeah. You, no one's really ever had a problem with them being used before exactly. it's just it's another tool in the toolbox yeah it's when it's, it a, br- it's a brand new tool yeah. so people don't really understand it yeah it's, it's like when the internet first came about and the, you had a lot of anti people being like nah this is a terrible idea yeah it's yeah. i don't think it's going to replace anything yet anyway so mm. i think it's just an extra thing that you can explore because mm. um, i there, there's obviously it's a blurry ground because they're drawing upon a lot of previous work that they haven't had permission to draw on and i realize that that's the main central of the topic that there are there are people concerned about ownership and stuff but um i also think that as artists we do that subconsciously anyway we're just not as efficient at computers at doing that so we take in art music everything and we are 
consciously or subconsciously impacted by that to create then go on and create the things that we go on to create ai does it on a very much more obvious level in that this picture this picture this picture all of these we understand what these are so we're going to put these together to create artwork so they do it on a much more traceable level but i still think that the way people's looking at a threat or people saying this is going to replace me I, I, or graphic designers and stuff like that i i, I look a look at that similarly as the world of like the electric car replacing horse and carriage as a mode mode of transportation you know like yes there are economic there's a a clunky moment where you're like oh this is actually much more efficient and it's um but then to remove the human element anyway i don't think it makes an artist obsolete because the human element for me is imperfection it's like or it's the story behind the artist who created it or the reason that they created it in the first place so just because i can go on the internet and say create a fucking renby and it generates something maybe even better than i could do for me i see that as a tool still and it hasn't got the same sentiment of like why it was this created where did this come from the, the imperfections of it like i think it's it could be really a handy tool it could be a good starting place if i went okay make me a beat that sounds like dr dre with a Jimi hendrix solo with um a, a queen like outro like and it made it perfectly that's a really good starting place to build a fucking song for, so for me i see it as a tool i know that there's a slightly uh, uh, more unusual take on it but i really i really like i'm excited by what it, the the potential it has to offer us in a creative purely creatively regardless of all the controversy about public safety and threats of like on a, on a purely creative innovative level i'm actually really excited by ai and that's why i wanted to lean into it so i think i think it's a fucking cool video as well mm. are you team wallace or gromit um gromit he's 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 got the heart strings he's got the yeah. heart strings yeah it's so odd how like the world lines up with those those kind of things let me see where we are with the plot uh What have we got? What's my favorite Rage Against Machine song? <laughs> Again, this is a. It's like what's my favorite album? It changes a lot. Uh, I like um, Vietnam. Vietnam is a sick track. And um, what's that fucking? Come on, what's that fucking song? Oh, I don't know. It'll come to me in a bit. People are asking about Sick Boy album. People of the Sun. When is the album coming? Uh, Sick Boy album is dropping very, very soon. We've got two two more videos to come out. So we've got the next track. It's called Murderer. Um, it's a bit more fun, a bit more playful. Another one one shot. And then after... Suicide Live as well. We've got Suicide Live coming out before that. And then, and then after that, of course, we have Money Game Part 3, uh, which is kind of like the cherry on the cake of this album. And then after that, we'll have the album coming out. So it's coming. It's going to be dropping before the end of summer, basically. I don't have an exact date for you yet, but um, yeah, it'll be coming to vinyl. It'll be coming um, all over your face. Um. <laughs> There's a little sneak that one in there under the carpet. Um, Ooh, love Music nice. 4 question. Love Music Part 4 is on the album, my boys. Yes, yes. Love Music yes, Part 4 yes. is there. My G's. Yeah, Love Music Part 4, Money Game Part 3. We're just basically, you know, it's just, just a, a bunch of remakes because I can't think of original ideas. Basically. Yeah, we got a but no, it's a banger. Love Music Part Four is my, maybe my favorite of the Love Musics, and Money Game Part Three is probably definitely my favorite of the Money Games. So we're leveling up. Yeah, I do like the Cure a lot. I listened to the Cure. I listened to the Cure, and then I cried. Um, there are eighteen songs on the album. It's a big fatty. It's a fat album. When's your autobiography coming out? I am not really. I've only just started. My autobiography is not coming out for a long time. <laughs> You've got too much living to do. Yeah, and it would be really sad <clears throat> if it were to come out now. There's a lot of sadness in it. So I'm, yeah, I'm, need some more positive I need to create a bit more happiness for that book. And then it'll have a positive art. So we've got a nice you know. balance of, of, of yin and yang. <clears throat> Vinyl, yes. Vinyl, yes. Vinyl, yes. Yes. Um... What a treat with 18 tracks. Yeah. I like to spoil you guys. It's more he just writes loads of songs and then has to put them on the album. So otherwise they'll just sit on his hard drive. And they'll get well. wasted, yeah. Yeah, it was originally going to be a 16 tracker and then two more songs accidentally fell out of my brain. Can I DJ? We were talking about this the other day. I can I can mix vinyl a little bit. Sam is. Sam's a rude boy on the decks. Uh, I, try, I try my best. Yeah. He's a rude boy. 
but yeah, I, I'm a little bit of vinyl mixing, oh, he's bad. like jungle and drum and bass. Um, dating fans off the table. Dating fans off the table. No, I like to date fans on the table. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? <laughs> I love these little sly comments. People are wanting Ren stickers. Have you got Ren stickers? No, I haven't got Ren stickers. What like what would you want on the sticker? I feel like uh, you're you with your trousers down and your <laughs> cheap bum. Why is it always getting sexual? It's because you've got a nice bottom, my friend. Yeah, it's true. Um yeah, we've seen yeah. loads, loads of bum. Where I'm trying to think, what is the weirdest talent of all that you have? What's the weirdest talent that you have? The weirdest. Weirdest. I, I can, I can wiggle. This isn't weird, but I can. Yeah, you can move your ears. That is pretty good. I know. I can really move them. You know, I can see them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty skillful. That's the pretty. Yeah. I just. But then these skills, because you end up having them so long, don't become weird anymore. What do you mean? It's like... Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I can rotate my hand 360 as well. That's, that's like double jointed shit. Like, I can drink a pint pretty quickly. I've never I've never been beaten. You've never been beaten? Yeah. Mad. Um, that's quite a claim. Should we go get a slippery one? Uh, yeah, I would oh. collaborate with Ocean. That'd be sick. I like Ocean Wisdom a lot. Um, Josh needs more beer. Get someone get Josh a beer. Yeah. Right now. Guys. Yeah. Beer. beer. Oh, we we still need more donations to uh have the slaves. The, the beer fund. The beer is. slaves. Yeah. Yeah. Beer. Josh is gonna go to get a beer. Naked or sexy underwear. What? It does get sexual quick. <sighs> Liv still around? I mean I'm sure she's still around in Brighton. Yeah, lives lives a bad badass. Sick. Weirdest place you ended up after a bender. I remember once oh, I've woken up in some weird places actually. Um, this is back. I've been drunk in a long, long time, but back in my um. Oh, can you grab? Uh, you just, you just go for my beer then. No, I thought I, I thought you had the liquid death. Can you? Oh, oh don't oh. shout out about it. No, <laughs> don't do it. It never happened. We do not support. We we've got canned water. I'm not sure if, if I believe in water in a can, but we have it. Um. Why I quit drinking? Well, I put I put this on on the. Sh uh, funnily enough, it links up with suicide. I quit drinking the uh, on the day of Joe's funeral, um, a long time ago, a long long time ago. So on his funeral, I won two bottles of wine, and I was like, I'm gonna drink these two bottles of wine, and I'm gonna get really drunk. So that's what I did. I drank two bottles of wine. I got absolutely steaming, and then um, this is canned water that makes me feel like I'm drinking beer, but it's actually what does it say? Water, mountain water. It's really not the best either. Yeah, that's what it does. <laughs> unless, unless they're watching, in which case, thanks guys. <laughs> um, well, you just put it on your, your SD cards there. That's not appropriate. Yeah, they sent me they sent me a few crates um, for free. Um, so it's not sponsored. It just it just happens to be in the house, <laughs> and it's so refreshing. Uh, and now only seven ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. I actually, okay, yeah. It's good marketing. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? If Liquid Death want to pay me to do a commercial, please, <laughs> please do. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have to say. <laughs> they gave me a cool hat, to be fair. I like it. Um, Tash Sultana, I'd love to collaborate with Tash Sultana. That would be banging. She is... Um, uh, an amazing, amazing lady who I definitely don't have a crush on. <laughs> Drink if you lie. This water costs eight dollars. Does it? Don't bother getting it then. <laughs> yeah, that's way. We got this for free. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's better out of tap. No. <laughs> if this is more than a dollar a can, don't bother. <laughs> Sorry, Liquid Death. I know you sent me some free stuff. I really like the hat, by the way. If you're watching. <laughs> To be fair, I need to go get mine. Um, <clears throat> anyway, what else? <sighs> Perfect woman. I don't know. They're all they're all different. That's what's brilliant about them. They all bring something different to the table on top of the table. 
So um, here's the difference. It says, ah. yeah. Where do I shop? Um, I shop. The closest place. No, uh, there's a lot of like vintage places in Brighton or ASOS, really. But to be honest, I'll. I'll I was about I'm. I'm like oh, food. <laughs> All right. Clothing makes more sense. Yeah, clothing. Just <laughs> I know I I like to look on the internet, like eBay. To be honest, like I'll, I'll just look for. I love vintage nineties Adidas sportswear mostly. <laughs> to be honest, I know the shit, but mostly shout, that. Shout out to all the vintage buyers in the PO box. Yeah, a few a few people in the PO box sent me Adidas jackets. Um, I actually love you for that because I've loved every single one of them. They're like right on my street. What I love is people like know me now well enough to know exactly what I will love. So the vintage Adidas jackets that turned up in the PO box. Whoever sent those, if you're on the stream right now. Big yourselves up. Yeah, I'm a slag for it. I'm an yeah, Adidas you, slut. You should really get sponsored by them pretty soon. Yeah, why don't they do that? Just give, give me, send me some Adidas shit. i basically repping them all the time. And Liquid Death. Ah. <laughs> Corporate whore. Can I eat more things now? Unfortunately not yet. I haven't really pushed the boat out, to be honest, yet. But um, I've, I can, I've, been eating a, I've been taking a lot of supplements that are giving me the nutrients that I was deficient in before I came to Canada because they found out what I was deficient in so that's helping I think yeah I thought we've shot everything in Canada on um the Sony A7S III we've shot everything in Canada on We're, yeah yeah yep someone's going see you later thank you for joining me we've been on we've been on here a while now so we'll probably bugger off soon too but it's, this is nice this is lovely hanging out thanks um what have your guys' favourite experience in Calgary been? Favourite experience in Calgary? The arcade was quite fun. Um, just hanging out with the boys, to be honest. It's, 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 it's been really nice to catch up properly because I haven't seen Ren, obviously, since he came to Canada. Um, and then when we usually do see each other, a lot of it's kind of work and video orientated. So it's, yeah. been, it's, been, it's been nice just to hang quite a lot. Um, and... Yeah, see see the sights. Banff has just been ridiculous. But they asked about Calgary, so I'm not allowed to talk about Banff. Josh, yeah, that's that's kind of my biggest problem is the fact that it's specifically Calgary. Um, Banff and Drumheller were really really nice. Yeah, Drumheller was wicked. You also ate nearly a hundred milligrams of gummies, yeah, of edibles yesterday. Well, yeah, I don't want to bring it up. All oh, right, it <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter, is it? It's legal here in Canada. Josh ate a hundred milligrams of edibles yesterday. Was it a hundred? <laughs> Yeah, 80 milligrams. That's quite high. Yeah. yeah. I'm not allowed to smoke weed here. So I just watched him. I've been smoking it for you, man. Yeah. He's, he ate enough for all of us, basically. I'm enjoying all the yay joshes. <laughs> 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 I'm living for everyone. Um, what, is every, what else is everyone saying? How tall are you? Uh, we got to this. Six foot one, I am. We're all about the same, aren't we? Similar. Yeah. I'm six, and you're like six five. You stop counting up to six, don't you, really? Yeah, around. Is it because you're 6'5", six 6'4", six somewhere? Just a bunch of tall boys hanging out. Yeah. Is Ren messy? Am I messy? No, he's just got ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> the cleaners are good. The cleaners are good. <laughs> <laughs> the, cl the cleaners are here today and it's, it's looking well nice. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Right, show us your Slav squat. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, what's a Slav squat? Are we going to have to Google it to find out? Leg day? Slav squats? Do they know it's leg day? I want to Google it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'm really hoping this isn't something well offensive. Oh, okay. Oh, that is quite cool. Oh, it's just a, sta it's just a stance. You just do it on your chair. Yeah, that's a good stance, man. That is big. All right, Alan. Wait, let's let's get this down. Okay, yeah, bro. It's just it's just one of it's just one of these, these man. So this is just how we're gonna hang out today. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, in the slab. Are we nailing it? Oh, we're nailing it. Hold, hold my beer. How's it looking? Are we? Do we approve? I'm just above. Yeah. yeah you're too big. You're not squatting is this, enough. Is this the one? <laughs> Knees up. Okay. Yeah. So we've slapped it. Yeah. Great crotch pricks, people are saying. Well, your car's guitars are behind me. All right, okay. <laughs> I feel like that was well executed. We're squatters now. Yeah, nice. 
No, oh, ne people wanted to see the kneecaps. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh, look at these knees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm definitely a kneecap man. Yeah. Um, Neasy does it. Nice. There's also there's also we're we're gonna go and we're gonna go and train legs. This is such a boy thing. We're gonna go train legs today, boys. Ren's got me into the gym. We've got we've got a gym downstairs, so we're gonna go and hit up the gym. Just a couple of boys drinking some liquid death, hitting up the gym. That's what it is. It has turned into Babe Station. We are the babes. Yes, and this is the station. Um, Gandalf on his knees. Someone said. Oh, uh, of, of, of course. course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you want sent to you? I think we all know. <laughs> I think we all know deep down what I really want. I'll let you decide. <sighs> Liquid Death is Jaeger, Goldschlager, Fireball. Liquid Death is water. Liquid. De I don't know who what company do it. Is it well? Is it is it by the same company as Jägermeister? I didn't know that. Um, if so, I'm apo I apologize for saying all the mean things because I want to be uh, I want to do some music lessons with you. <laughs> this is great. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. It's worth every dollar. <laughs> Farts in a bottle. Uh. <laughs> 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 I'll call a weed. Unfortunately, I do neither at the moment. I'm a good little boy. What about you, boys? Josh says both. Um, depends mm -hmm. on the occasion. Russian bride on the way to the PO box. Thanks, guys. You are you. You shouldn't have. The post office lady gets so stressed. My Russian bride. Yeah, the post office lady's face always um face just drops every time we walk in because she knows that she's got got a fair bit of work ahead of her. Um. Do your fans have a name? <laughs> I hope they've got names. <laughs> Otherwise, it's quite sinister. The Renegades are someone... They're self, self-proclaimed. Yeah, I'm sure they, they go they by many names. Really, yeah, they give themselves plenty of names. See? Renegades. The Renegades. They're all, they're all about that. Renegades! Brah! Yeah, my. Here we go. Um, <laughs> someone keeps asking if we play any instruments. Do you, um, do you guys play instruments? Josh, do you play any instruments? Not well. Uh, I used to play the guitar well, and now I can still play it, but I, yeah. That's it. I produce a little bit, but that's just for myself, really, rather than as a, a proper venture. And then we just write and play all of Ren's parts, really. Yeah, we are the ghostwriters behind Ren, though, so. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like we say, not well. Yeah, we're not very good at it, obviously. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Who sings better? Uh, oh, wait, someone said... Who, who oh, someone said Double Facts Club. Double Facts actually hit me up and said he'd be up for it. Um, I remember him back in the day. He's an old school, he's an old school G. I like Double Facts. Sick Boy Jacket Drop will be soon. Um... Well, what's everyone else saying? Piss, piss, piss. <laughs> piss cool. I'm glad this conversation is uh, the caliber is only getting higher and higher as time goes on. I'm sure that we are not losing our minds with time. Sam and Ren should do a duet. Who plays Ren in the film about his life? Um, Michael Sarah. What are you guys saying? <laughs> Well, who's going to play us in that? In no. Your, in oh, yeah, who would play you? I think Michael Sarah would play me, just an awkward, awkward white guy. I think it'd be funny if Killian Murphy played you and everyone then shouted Ren at him. <laughs> yeah, Killian Murphy would be. Yeah, that would be, be perfect revenge, actually. <laughs> if, it, if it was, uh, yeah, if it was Cillian Murphy. Kill, is it Killian? Killian yeah. If it was Killian Murphy from Peaky Blinders and then everyone floods his comment section with, hey, you look like that Ren guy, that would be the perfect revenge. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't have to read a hundred comments like that every single fucking day of my life. Yeah, I think I think I think the, the most productive thing that, for, that would come out of this stream is all of you going on to Killian Murphy's profile <laughs> and comment on his pictures. Hey, you look like that Ren guy. <laughs> it, yeah, if you can do that, that would be a, that that would be class. <laughs> don't say that I sent you. Just be like, just be like, oh, you really look like that Ren dude. 
Like, oh, yeah, that you look like a guy that makes music, Ren. <laughs> That'll be the perfect revenge. Unfortunately, he's he, he's he's got these big dreamy blue eyes. He's I, he's he's much a, he's much more attractive man than me. I'm I'm aware of this, but I'm not saying that to fish for compliments. By the way, I know that people are like me me me. It's okay. It's, a, it's an objective thing. But please go and flood his comments action saying these things. You know he makes music. Oh, he doesn't have s- social media. He's also cooler than me. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, he's he's just yeah. better than me in every way. Maybe not, maybe not spitting some rap bars, but he's got a one up on me in other places. Motherfucker, <laughs> I love him though. I like Peaky Blinders. It's just not all the association. Um, um, um what have we got? What else we got? Do we freestyle? We do some freestyle. Sometimes we get down. We freestyle really badly. We, we, I used to, I used to on this um <laughs> live stream thing a lot. Yeah, we're not we're not Harry Mac. No, mm. we'll give it a good go. How old am I in my head? You're about fourteen. Yeah. Maybe fifteen. Yeah. And then I'm maybe like eighty-seven. No, I'm actually no. I'm I would say I'm like ninety-six. You know when they start losing their mind, they're going a little bit senile. Oh yeah. Well, and the humor like starts coming back. Kind of thing, yeah, know. I'm I'm ninety-four. I'm 94. So you're still a little bit older than me at 87. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm... How old, how old do you feel? I think you're like me, Ren, where you're like in your late 50s on one side of the brain. <laughs> <laughs> but an early teen on the other. Yeah, yeah. 14 on one side, 57 on the other side. Or 94, yeah. Yeah. Um... <sighs> Have I ever connected with Chris Lieb? Oh yeah, we have. We've we've chatted. Chris Lieb, he, he's sick, he's sick man. He's a vocal coach on YouTube. Um, I love him. He's a, he's a really nice guy, and I really like his reactions as well. Actually, really nice guy. Um, it's so hard to keep up with any of these. I I used to watch Chris's videos. Um, before. A long time ago, before he started doing reactions to me, probably a couple of years ago. Um, I really liked his breakdowns of Jeff Buckley tunes. Yeah, sick. I love to collaborate with Little Sims. What are you reading? Someone said, Sam and Josh, have you got ADHD? Have you? Josh does. Diagnosed, yeah, a little. Uh, no, I'm just uh, full of beans. Mm. And liquid death. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Um, any good questions? What we got? Why is Sam so hot? That's what I want to know every day. You fucking... It's it's only getting better with you taking me to the gym. Yeah. Sex. Pineapple on pizza. I can't eat anything because I'm allergic to like 95% of the world. But if I could eat on pizza, god damn it, I would. Am I sure I'm not bi? Actually, no. Now that you've asked it, (laughs) I've realized I do in fact love Big fat dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind in the moment. What can I say? Uh, the stream, eh, boys? There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we we're gonna go for uh, three minutes. <laughs> Let's go. Um. What? <laughs> Three minutes, that's ambitious. That's a one take, mate. <laughs> 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 it's a one stroke, one take. One take, no cuts. <laughs> Peel box is going to get real full quick. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I'm dreading. I'm dreading. Right, okay. Favourite Jeff Buckley song. Um, I said, oh, We spoke about this in the last room. My actually favourite Jeff Buckley is, is more of the stuff that he does around his song. He has got a live album actually where he did a bunch of like blues covers and stuff on, on Spotify. I fucking love that album. Um, I did I did see a drawing um, that somebody did uh, that, that, uh, that someone's kid did of me, and it was amazing. If it's the same one, um, a lot of stuff has come through. But if that's that's the one, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was wicked. Um, a lot of these things. Also, I'm, I'm really there's literally so much that comes through that I haven't got while I'm doing treatment and working on music and stuff. I, I haven't got time to reply. I've, I've made sure I put this in the comment because otherwise I'd try and write back to all of them. But um, yeah, know that I see them and I love them and I'm really respectful. I'm really um, 
what's it called? Uh, grateful for them all. So thank you for that. Um, going to be so original, but are you the same Ren? Am I the same Ren who made the money game? So I'm in the fucking video, bro. <laughs> 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 Just watch the video and <laughs> you'll see someone who looks just like me. Yes, is a fine answer, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't deserve a fine answer. Come on, it's a stupid question. <laughs> no offense, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no questions are stupid. <laughs> um, How's the RNLI? Fundraising. Oh yeah, the fundraising's good. We smashed it, man. It's it's gone over over the um original is five grand target. We smashed that, then it's ten grand. I feel like we'll probably be hitting fifteen grand by the time I get to Wales and present them with a the track. So that's fifteen thousand pounds going to a volunteer organization who are saving people on the Anglesey coast. Um who were out looking for my friend Joe when he went missing. So thank you very much for everyone who did that. I feel that's amazing. Uh we did we threw that that came together in a week and that money's gonna go in saving lives so thank you everybody for helping out in that place we got like fifteen thousand pounds i'm gonna go and present them with a big check so twelve thousand eh, at the moment yeah cool so there's twelve thousand moment um yeah it's amazing basically it's it's uh, uh uh that money's gonna go very far so i'm very very grateful and it's a cause that's very close to my heart so thank you uh silly Murphy, killian murphy does have a twitter so you know what to do basically yeah Tell him that he looks like me. Kill him off his Twitter. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to make my day, man. Oh. Hey, do you, you know that you look like that Ran guy? <laughs> um, what's my favorite guitar make oh it depends on the guitar um for bass and gu electric guitar it's fender I, 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 I love telecasters i love the precision bass and then for my acoustic guitar it's the Cordoba. um it's which is like a classical make uh i love that as well yeah why don't i like the way i look i do like the way i look i just think that uh, i just think the killian murphy's i, I think He's a, sp Murphy he's, a sp he's a handsome man. Yeah. He's a handsome man, and that's not in. The, I don't say that in a self-deprecating way at all. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the way I look. It's fine, but I just think, I just think Kelly Murphy is a fucking god. <laughs> 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 Maybe I am by. <laughs> <coughs> Hi. Um. Do I want to dye my hair again? Yeah, I might go blonde again. We'll see what happens, man. We're we'll, all going to go blonde together. We might all go blonde together. <laughs> we might get on that bleach thing. Josh, you got to get blonde with us. Mark. Yeah, let's get the blondes in. Really hard, bro. <laughs> uh, someone's like, no, don't. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna do it anyway. You would all be so fit as blonde bisexuals. Why why, <laughs> why are you all pushing the bi thing on me so much? Well, I kind of think I know why. If it's, is it girls or guys doing it? If it's guys, then I kind of guess why. But, um, no, you know, I, I, th I would love to be or bi. I'm girls in relationships. Ge genuinely would. It would be great. I'd have a lot, m a lot more, a lot more choice. But, you know, I just, I just, I'm really sorry. I just, yeah, I just love the girls. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> But I would love to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can never fully close the door. Yeah, you got to leave it a little bit open. Just keep okay. keep them guessing, mate. Keep it spicy. Yeah, keep them guessing. When when is I am by part one coming out? <laughs> it's a work in progress. Yeah, first we need to disappear for three minutes and see if it's see what it's like. Um, do I like owls? That's a much better question. Owls. I love owls. I think owls What's are your great. The little baby white ones, what are they called? Barn owls. Tawny. No, tawny. I don't know. They're little cute little <laughs> tiny fucking things. <laughs> the little tiny white ones. I love those little guys. Snowy. Yeah, Snowy. Little baby snowy owls. What about you guys? Oh, Owlets. Uh, Owlets. Barn owls are pretty, pretty beautiful. Yeah, lush. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of good owls out there. It's a hard... It's a hard uh, yeah. Someone said, are the cleaners by? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll bring him in next time. We'll find out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, giving them all that Toblerone's finally paid yeah. off. I'm glad, because look, this was, was yeah. going to be potentially quite a heavy stream. I said this at the start, and I feel like it's not anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at all. <laughs> so hopefully, if you came into this stream expecting tears, uh, what you got is this. So, cheers, Liquid Death. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hang on. He doesn't have a Twitter account either. He's off the grid, bro. I respect that. Who? Killian. No. He's off the grid. The but as soon as he, his manager's email. as soon as he comes on the grid, <laughs> we know what to do. Buy owls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, bisexual owls are my favourite. Do I have a message for the ADHD, autoimmune mentally ill guys? Um. My people, um, <laughs> my brothers, my sisters. Um, do I have a message? That's quite a heavy thing to condense in one message. Um, just keep, keep, keep on doing what you're doing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know what to say to that. I, I think that you can. I, I, I think that these identities um, shouldn't ever be an anchor. I think they that we should. I don't know, like like for me, being like, oh, I've got this mental health condition, I've got ADHD and so this and that. I don't ever want that to be an anchor. I just want it to, if I ever use it, it's just a way of explain, explaining certain behavioral patterns that I might have. Um, so yeah, that, I guess that's my advice is if you have con one of those conditions, don't see it as your enemy or don't see yourself as a victim of it, but just see it as like, this is this is something that humans have decided explains this power, part of my personality because we're all a spectrum right we're yeah, all a spectrum it's just another way of understanding how you work and yeah. coming to terms with how you work and then you know then you know how to like you know do certain things in certain ways to deal with things you struggle with or things you're really good at and then yeah it's, just, it's utilizing we're, and, we're, and we're all and we're all that yeah. even if you don't have uh, uh conditions diagnosed conditions we, we all have our strengths and weaknesses in certain areas and i feel like these help us you know maybe there's some uh, emotional areas that we're a little bit more turbulent or there's focus areas that we're more turbulent and um it's just uh, i guess a way to understand ourselves better but not an anchor and not an affliction i never want to feel like i'm a victim of um the things going on even with like my autoimmunity on brain damage like it is the experience that i'm having but it is my own experience i, don't, I haven't lived another life so i've got anything to compare it to so i might as well as best as i can accept what i have um, and that's what I would try and urge anyone who feels like they're because for a long time I didn't right for a long time with the ME diagnosis particularly <laughs> I, I was I felt like a victim and when I was victimizing myself my life was a lot more difficult so I think if you're, you're in like early stages of diagnosis or problems then as, as, as best as you can know that um, even if it's a painful thing that you're dealing with or really difficult like a lot of mental health issues are a lot of autoimmune conditions are um, in best way possible like how can I accommodate acceptance and how can i have like live with this it's just okay to have different needs isn't it well what are you three <laughs> when you're away for three minutes who's the top and who's the bottom <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a quick rotation yeah i think yeah. i think we, we take turns yeah, man. Yeah. yeah definitely we believe in equality here in top and bottom land <laughs> yeah A ran sandwich. People are asking for your photo without the peach. A what? The photo of your bottom. Oh, the picture of my ass. Uh, I, th I think that in Instagram would send. I've been censored enough times this week, to be honest. YouTube censored me. I don't want to censored on Instagram as well. Uh, eloquent. Now back to buy owls. <laughs> yeah, great speech, Ren. Now to give the people what they actually want. Bisexual owls. <laughs> <laughs> What you should do in the future is do challenges. Challenges? Streams, like how many baked potatoes can you carry? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We asked this question the other day. How many like cooked baked potatoes do you think that you could hold in your arms and walk? How many steps was that? 15 meters? Yeah, yeah. How many? All right. Chat. Please tell me because I, I know what number I think is realistically possible. As a human being, a fully grown human being, how many baked potatoes could you hold in both of your arms and walk 15 meters? It's important to consider that they are cooked baked potatoes. They're cooked baked potatoes. You can't break them out of their shells. But you can't break them out of shells? You can't mold them. You can't, you can't mold them into shapes. You can put them on and then 
press them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't like make them into squares. Yeah, what's the consensus here? How many how many baked potatoes are we saying? There's a range of like someone said thirty eight, twenty, four twenty. That's come on, that's just a weed joke. They're not like hot, they're not so hot that they're burning, you know. They're not they're not they're not so hot that they're burning, you. <laughs> they're they're you know they're See, we're averaging around mid twenty. Like someone said sixty nine, bro. One hundred and six. No, it's lies. It's lies. I. See, I, I think I could personally take 34. <laughs> You're saying less. I think less. I don't think you could do 34. Oh, I could definitely do 34. Uh, me, and, me and Josh are like mid-20s. What 20, were you, 26? 26. 26. I think I could take 34, man. Like, like arms like this, yeah. There's quite a lot of surf. And the big ones can sit in between the gaps. So you could get three rows of 10 off the bat. And then you stacked it up four times. You've got 40 potatoes there, bro. We spent a good hour on this in the car yesterday. Yeah. yeah. It was a big car convo. I think it's 34 for me, man. People are saying no way. No way. What do you guys think? Someone says like 10, 10 12. Ask, but yeah, we're talking about just in your arms. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, there's, no, there's no... There's no tricks like that. Yeah. Not, we've gone through that as well. Yeah, yeah. You can't put one in your butt. Someone, someone's like, no chance. I reckon I could do it, you know? I reckon I could do 34. I thought about this. The, boy, the boys say mid-20s. Send your videos in. Whoever can get the most... Gets the rights to all the Ren's music. You good with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whoever guesses the right amount of potatoes gets the rights to all my music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right all right I, th I think i could do it I'll, I'll try and maybe uh, the thing is we'd have to cook 34 potatoes that's long as fuck you'd have to have a good group of people to eat them after yeah this. otherwise it's just a massive waste a potato yeah. waste no one likes a potato maybe waste just never know. i can't even eat potatoes <laughs> i'll be ashamed well what, how about we change it and do courgettes no nah, because that's harder bro they're like they're like well, cylindrical like squash yeah, no, I, I reckon it's got to be a potato, and I, I will do it. That's that's the thing. <laughs> no, I will. I will. I will carry thirty-four potatoes just to shut up the haters, man. Yeah, I reckon I can. As an ex-server, I have a confidence in twenty-four to twenty-five. So, oh, I mean, that's, that's someone with experience. Yeah, right. See, this is it. But I this this it. is someone with a dream, a dream that won't back down. Yeah, so twenty-six. I'm not driving now, so I can actually. Potato. No, this is me. 20, 34. We do need some potatoes up in here because this I feel like this has to be settled. Why cooked? Because I cooked is it's slightly easier, I think. Cooked is like they're a little bit squishy. I'm still mid twenties. I'm still mid twenties. I just sorry, I had thirty four, bro, thirty four. Yeah. No, think about look, find me something potato sized. Can, can you Google someone carrying baked potatoes? Does any, this is even bigger than the potato, right? Does, so You've got a gap here. Yeah? You could, you could probably um, actually. Oh, he's got questions. No, no, no. But think about it. Like, I think that I could get three rows. Okay, look, these hard drives are like this. I, I could get three rows. I, I could maybe even yeah, get but four. You only rows. get like. Okay, let me think. Two times three. I reckon you could get maybe yeah, but eight. A baked potato bottom. isn't as big as this fucking thing. A baked potato is like that, that big. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so you get rows like of three. three across, One, two, and three. Then you get four. rows of. Yeah, so that's nine on the that's nine on the base, and I reckon I I could easily stack three of those up. That's twenty seven. Nine on that, you that's toppling off. You're gonna fall. You're not no, gonna bro, get three. nine on each. No, You've three stacks. Three. One, two, three, leaning towards me, yeah, and then that's twenty seven, and then I've just got to put uh seven more on top of that. Easy done. Easy yeah. done. Th chat GPT got involved. Chat okay, Chat okay. DGP. Oh, oh fuck. Okay, what's yeah. Chat GPT saying? So let's assume the average person can probably carry objects five pounds each. Baby potato size. Okay. What's it doing? That's not. That's not numbers. Where's the answer? The answer's not there. It wrote a story instead. <laughs> I reckon I can do thirty-four, man. Mashed. <laughs> yeah, thirty-four mashed potatoes, bro. No, I I reckon I can do thirty-four. People are doubting me, but I would I would shut you all up in an instant. Someone has asked a really good question. What? Harris Piper, what what are our species of potato? Just the standard house plant potato, the, the house what? potato. Can we, can we just Google quickly? There's someone potato. carrying baked potatoes. Just like just get. All right, yeah, let's. All right, come on, let's go on YouTube and see if someone's done this before. 
<laughs> because I'm sure that they have. Right, here we are. Let's get this in the corner so we can see what's going on with it. All right. Okay. Let's settle this once and for all. Oh, fuck. My laggy. Cunt. No. Man carrying baked potatoes in his arms. How many... I don't know if anyone's ever done this before. It's a brand new challenge. Wow, this is quite an original challenge, Alan. Man carrying potatoes. Carrying... How many baked potatoes can you carry? See, they're not that big, bro. It's like the size of a fist. I'm sorry, I could do 34. Look, easy, easily. No one's carrying them, but I could definitely do this. Look at that. Okay, how many potatoes? Let's potato make some crusted potatoes. No, they're little, they're little pathetic ones. No, like, so like, yeah, the common house potato, 34 common. I, I may have to take, take it back and I think maybe you can maybe do more. No, it really. depends on the baked potatoes because the one that he had in his hand there yeah. definitely could. But what I'm picturing isn't a baked potato like this. Yeah. I'm thinking a baked potato like this. I'm thinking like a good big baked potato. And we, but if they're like the, 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 the more general baked potato, it's a different... You, no, like... like a, talking like a, a hefty yeah, baked how, potato. A fuck, no, a house potato, bro. You can walk 15 metres with that. And if you drop one, you get shot in the head, Rem. Yeah. You forgot about the shot in the head bit. Oh yeah, we forgot to tell you that if you drop a single potato, you get shot in the head. Apparently that was part of the conversation yesterday as well. I still do 34. Someone says we should just go into the shop and just do it with them. But they won't be baked then, so it's... <sighs> yeah, but I, I could... Ca we'll, we'll, we'll move on. We've been on potatoes probably now for about 10 minutes, so we'll move away from this topic. But I think I could carry 34 house potatoes. And if anybody doubts me, watch me. At some point, I'll do this. Yeah, or if ne next time I do on a show, if someone brings like 34 potatoes to the show, cooked, and a gun, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> what the fuck is a house potato? The common house potato. You know, like your your average sized potato, like a like a house plant, house okay. potato, house cat, house potato. <laughs> what is a house potato? A house potato. <laughs> a house baked. Potato. Yeah. Um, someone saying Canada or UK. What are we saying? Please. UK massive. Yeah. Here you go. I I I say I'm gonna say Canada takes it for natural beauty. UK takes it for culture. That's what I'm gonna say. Um. UK's got some fucking beautiful spots. Too, yeah, though. but did you did you look out your eyeballs when we went to Banff the other day? It was incredible. But like, you know. Scotland is... Yeah, great. Scunthorpe is great to look at. Scotland. <laughs> Scotland is absolutely stunning. Yeah, but... I think I realised I'm just... Have you been to the Isle of Skye? No. I'm just you a haven't small even been country the... boy, you know? You're a like, country bumpkin. It needs to be a small country yeah. where things are close and you don't have to, like, just look at Yeah, but I mean, shit. I grew up on Anglesey, which, and Anglesey is stunning, but I'm willing to say that Banff and, like, those mountains are prettier. Okay, so the drive to Drumheller though, where yeah. it's just flat land where it all looks the exact yeah, but same. We're, yeah, but but you can't. Average, but that but that's like saying England looks ugly because like Scunthorpe, Scunthorpe <laughs> looks ugly. So no offense, Scunthorpe or Slough. Okay. So <laughs> 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 no, but, no offense. No, no, no. But if you're talking about like concentration, yeah, the UK has lots of really beautiful things a lot closer together, whereas Canada, I say, has some some super beautiful bits, but then there's a lot that's just Flat. No, but there's a lot that's beautiful, man. Like, and we haven't even scratched the surface of like the maple trees, Alaska, the. Alaska's the, not Canada. Okay, Alaska's <laughs> not Canada. Well, that was a test, and you passed. So, so or the 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 rainbow trees. Have you seen these boys? No, I've not seen rainbow trees. Are they Canadian? I'm gonna try and find them. Rainbow trees. Look at them, rainbow oh. eucalyptus. Where, where are they from? Philippines. Indonesia? Yeah, the Philippines and you. Yeah, in Canada. <laughs> the, that, yeah, that the famous state of Papua New Guinea in Canada. Um, that's where I'm going to show the chat this these trees, by the way, because um, these are these famous 
Canadian trees, by the way, guys, that grow in the Canadian state of uh, New Guinea, Philippines, and Indonesia, those <laughs> Canadian <laughs> states. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but these are the famous Canadian trees. These are these are legitimate real trees. These these are uh, Canadian fine trees. <laughs> That's proved your point. To be fair. Yeah. Right, are they by trees? Most they are definitely by. Yeah. 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 They're definitely by. The by owls live in them. Yeah. I, I I'm sticking to it. I think Canada is more beautiful than the UK in terms of scenery, and I think the UK has got it for culture and music. I think UK is on point for the music. <laughs> You've got a film. To be fair, we should do a video in Redwoods in America or something like. That. I saw a picture of some Redwoods the other day, and I was like, we really need to do a live session in town. And that's just my honest LGB thoughts. trees. <laughs> yes. Yes, here for it. Yeah. Here for it. Um wonder why he likes rainbow toys. Please stop pushing this on me. <laughs> Actually fuck it, push it on me. Push it in me. <clears throat> I live in Scunthorpe. Oh, sorry man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That's funny. I'm sorry. What? He lives in Scunthorpe. I I grew up in Dwiran and like it's 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 the it's the shithole basically in in um in North Wales. So I I feel empathy. But shitholes can create magic. Shitholes can create magic. <laughs> Sam Perry Falvey, <laughs> 2023. <laughs> Shitholes can create magic. Ever, <laughs> 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 um, uh, I'm trying to find tennis or Haribo. That's such a funny thing to compare. <laughs> Do you mean the sport tennis or the sweet Haribo? Uh, probably Haribo. You? Uh, ooh, it's a tough one. Um, what about? <laughs> uh, no, I don't have an answer. What country do you want to shoot in less? Ooh, that's a good question. <coughs> um, all right. How about we just go to like the Maldives or something? Because I think that'd be a nice holiday, and then we'll just do a video while we're there. Yeah, so anywhere nice. Atlant anywhere I want to. Nice. I want to shoot in Atlantis. Yeah, that'd be sick. The lost city of Atlantis. That'd be so nice. If anyone wants to fly us out anywhere really pretty to do videos. If anyone wants to fly us out anywhere pretty to do videos, let us know. Tips for busking. Um, hopefully. <laughs> Tips, get it. <laughs> um. Buskin, just uh, I think Buskin's brilliant. Just um, I think play music. No, I, I think perform like you are performing to a, your show in front of thousands of people. I think Buskin it's, it's very easy to introvert during Buskin, but I like to give a show. I think just perform like you are playing at Live Aid. Um, yeah, I don't know. That was that's probably better advice than that, but. My brain's a bit mushy right now. Um, free party scene or festivals? Probably, oh, it depends on the festival. It depends on the free party. I uh, like both. Yeah, I, I'm a fan. So why pick one when you can have both? Why pick one when you can have both? Sam I feel like that's the sentiment of this stream. <laughs> <laughs> why pick one when you can have both? <clears throat> um... Any tips on autism? I I would be unqualified to answer that question as as a non autistic person, um, so I'm not really sure uh, what advice to give you. But um, mm, I know some incredible people with autism, autism um, who are some of my yeah. some of my best mates actually. Um, who knows? People have said someone one one of my friends said it was like Ren, you've definitely got elements of this. So I think maybe there's a spectrum of things, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any advice because I feel un underqualified to, but all I know is there's fucking wicked people I know that with autism. That's so hard to follow 
Yeah, there's so many questions. We, we're going to go in a bit because we're, we're going to go hit up hit up the gym. We've been on a lot longer than I anticipated. Um, but guys, actually, we're just going to call it. Guys, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, thank you very much for, if you're here from the start, fair play for hanging out this long, um, for watching Suicide with us. I, uh, Yeah, please check out that song, share that song, stream that strong song. Um, as always, uh, doing this independently and it just really helps out um, organic word of mouth and sharing about. And we're killing it at the moment. We got number one on YouTube trending yesterday. It's the first time I got a number one on overall YouTube trending. So um, yes, that feels really good. Um, yeah, it's wicked. It's, it's really good to see. And yeah, thank you guys for joining us tonight. We love you and have a safe and blessed evening. Um, and always remember that you can carry 34 baked potatoes in your arms no matter what and i will see you another time till next time guys adios <laughs>